the uh, Sunshine Compliance. Uh, you want to do Tracy? You read that, please. Call to order. Sure. Um, notice of the time, okay. date, location, and agenda of this meeting to the extent known was provided at least 48 hours prior to the yeah, commencement of this meeting. Call to order. Oh. A little delayed. Um, notice of the time, date, location. There we go. Okay. I'm going to start again. <laughs> notice of the time, date, location, and agenda of this meeting to the extent known was provided at least 48 hours prior to the commencement of this meeting in the following manner, pursuant to the provisions of NJSA 10-4-6. The Open Public Meetings Act notice was posted in Town Hall and the Township's website by notification to newspapers on December 19th, 2023 of the schedule for 2024 and by providing notice to the Township Clerk. Ask you all rise to salute the flag. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to read the state mission statement. The purpose of the Special Improvement District is to promote, grow, and support local businesses, property owners, residents, and visitors. Melbourne Township SID Ordinance designates a District Management Corporation whose mission is to encourage the economic, cultural, and social vitality of Melbourne Township through increased marketing and visibility, improved and renewed infrastructure, and local businesses, and local business development and engagement. May I ask for an approval of the minutes from February 15th? Motion. And second. Sorry. Um, did you just do a voice vote? Yes, voice vote, please. Okay. A roll call. Yes, roll okay. call. Thank you. Alexa Clark. <laughs> okay. Okay. Tracy Cassidy, me, yes. Jackie Benjamin Lieberberg. Yes. Ben Stoller. Affirmative. Ashley Schultz. Is Ashley on? Is it? Yes. He will join likely later. Okay. And Stephen Weiner. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Weiner, Treasurer's Report. Yes, thank you. Fairly simple report this evening. Uh, it is located as attachment two to your packets. Um, just to highlight a couple things. Our bank balance as of February 29th, leap day, was $51,319. And then a more recent uh, snapshot of March 5th, we were at 50,731. Uh, you'll notice that on the special assessment line that um, you know, the amount owing is $204,000. It's showing zero collected. The tax assessment letters have gone out though. So um, that's in progress and we'll probably start seeing it in the next couple of months, depending on the flow. Uh, All right. Probably next couple of weeks. Weeks, yeah. excellent. Um, and that was it. Everything, everything is good. All the uh, expenses are detailed in attachment as well. All right, and as we've added um, this year, there's a grant report that comes with the treasurer's report. So um, that's attachment three in your packets. Um, the Main Street application took up most of my time uh, this month, so I haven't had a chance to pursue anything else, um, but that is listed um, on, this, uh, on this sheet and the application was submitted earlier this week, both the uh, digital and hard copy. Um, and we expect to hear probably late April, uh, worst case scenario, early May, as to the five municipalities that have been selected. Um, there's also, there's an outstanding payment of $4,800 or so, uh, which is 75% of the grant award from Essex County, which is the first portion of the payment that they are due to us for this year's public art program. Um, they've paid most of the municipalities, but I spoke to the grant administrator and there's a couple of towns that there's some sort of internal issue um, with the, the payment process um, at the county. And so our payment has been processed, but it has not been done yet. And so um, it's sitting there in limbo. So we're owed about $4,800 um, as part of that grant for this year. So when that comes in, it'll be reflected, um, but that is income due to us. 
Um, and then once we finish with Restaurant Week, Amanda and I are going to start working on two grants, which are listed uh, on this sheet, uh, Attachment 3 as well. Uh, the first is the New Jersey Division of Tourism, their cooperative marketing grant program. Um, that's been very successful with uh, SIDS around the state. Um, and then the Schumann Fund, which is a private philanthropy fund, um, has a diversity, equity, and inclusion program that we can use to focus on engaging with the Chinese and Indian communities. Um, and so that's something that we talked about at a prior meeting, and uh, funding would certainly help in order to engage those communities. So those are the items that are on the horizon. But uh, just to confirm, yes, we did, we did submit our Main Street application, which was the priority, and uh, we made it in on time, and we'll, we'll hear in a couple of weeks. Can I ask a question? Um, what is the dollar? Do we have any idea of the dollar amount of those potential grants or is it, is there a range? That would, they would both be um, subject to what is available in the fund versus who, who else applies. Right. Um, and then they are sliding scale. So the, the answer is, I don't know yet. Okay. And one more quick, on the Main Street application, do you have any feel of how many other applications are in there? I know it's pretty competitive. Right? Yeah, I, I, well, I was on a mandatory information call um, a couple weeks ago and there was probably 30 to 35 other towns. Um, and that was one of two calls that they had. So how many of them actually go forward and actually submit the application? I don't know it's anyone's guess, but I, I would say they'll probably get somewhere between 20 and 30 applications at, at worst. I think there'd probably be more because it only comes out once every three years. So you have to be in it this year or right. nothing till 2027. And that's for how many spots again? It's five spots statewide. Got it. Yeah. In it to win it. Okay, Mr. Stoller, Township Committee reports, please. Sure, just a couple. Uh, first with the Holiday Decor Committee, uh, which is to look at a committee to uh, do comprehensive township-wide uh, holiday decorative lights uh, to make sure there's continuity across the township. Uh, we've discussed it, uh, brought it up with Alex, uh, still work to be done, but everyone was quite receptive to it. So we'll be moving that forward. I should have more information to report on that in the near future. Excellent. Um, other items, uh, paper mill playhouse. Uh, we had our public information uh, on Tuesday evening, mm -hmm. uh, fairly well attended. Uh, the final approval uh, will go to vote on April 2nd. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I've spoken to a number of uh, businesses in town regarding the paper mill, as well as how it supports the underlying businesses. Gotten a lot of good feedback from them and absolutely under, underpins a lot of their business. Uh, and it really resonates with a lot of the information we've been talking about here as the demographics of our town changes. So uh, as we start to look to drive more of the demographics downtown, uh, that's certainly helped as well. So. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tim, Mr. Hoffman, Business yeah. Administrator's Report, Main Street Closure, the Traffic Study Path. Well, we, I think you have an old agenda. Yeah, that was from last month. Uh, We've got nothing to report this evening. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Got it. You got the right one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. Just in case there's a <laughs> uh, Ryan Cooper. <clears throat> Nothing to report this evening. Happy to field any questions that the uh, board may have. Any questions from any of the board members? No? Nope. Okay. My answer is probably going to be that we have to discuss it in close. <laughs> <laughs> Save us the trouble. Okay. Uh, marketing and events. Okay. Amanda Dean. Be as fast as possible. Okay. All right. The, Metro oh. um, the Metropolitan. So some updates there. Um, we have over 40 businesses participating in the um, new resident welcome bags. And um, just to report about 25% of them are from Upper Milburn Ave, which is really great. We still have more coming in. Um, but I wanted to show you a few of the businesses gave items with promotional products. So Home Instead gave one of those bags. Um, Paper Mill gave a pen, Milburn Camera Shop, um, an eyeglass uh, cleaner, and Smiles on Essex Chapstick 
<laughs> and then Bruce Hill Agency gave a little house key. So we have those, and then they're all going to go into, this is the bag that the Metropolitan uses. Um, so they're going to put water on either side, and then we're going to have our envelope, which is getting heavy, um, in here with all of the promotions as well as those items. So um, I'm going to do one final invite to all the businesses to participate. We have to have the rest of the postcards in hand by March 25th. And then um, we will get these to the Metropolitan so they can start using them April 1st. Wonderful. So it's going really well. Um, any questions? How many do you have so far? How many businesses? Just I've curious. Got, I, between 40 and 43. I, I literally was just adding more before we got to the meeting. Great. Um, and that's a combination of both the products and the postcards. I was out um, on Upper Milburn app today and it's really helpful. We got more people signed up. There's, we have so much going on that it's like they're hard, having a hard time keeping, coordinating it all. So being in person with people is really helpful. Amanda, quick question. And of course, we're going to have our explore postcards in there. And is the envelope, are we putting like a sticker yes. on it? And I want to, like, I'm going to do an updated right. postcard and I'll send it to you for awesome. approval. So that'll get printed by the end of next week. Thanks. Um, okay, restaurant. Oh wait, uh, advisory committee. Um, we One just, more thing. We're, are we going to have a direct our directory in there? Yes. Or, yeah, as well, right? This okay. is what I'm doing all next. <laughs> get through get through tomorrow. Okay. Um, so um, we're moving the advisory committee meeting to April 16th. It was on the 11th. Um, so if you want to mark your calendars, I'll send out a reminder tomorrow. And we invite all of you to attend. Um, so that's it. For... Can you make sure I'm on that invite as well? Yeah. Right. All right, restaurant week. Um, final number, we had a little over 40, but now we're, we're at 37 committed and have all their specials. Um, and it's increased by almost 30% participation from last year, which is great. Uh, final number of specials, we have uh, between 70 and 72. I'm just tweaking those uh, this afternoon. Um, we have a knee blast going out tomorrow as a reminder to everybody to make their reservations and make their plans. Um, I want to show we put a considerable amount of work uh, in on the website. We have the directory. If you want to pull that up, Tim. First, day. first, yeah. First day. So the specials. Um, See, actually, can you hit the um, renew button? The or, yeah. I just I made updates to it. That's not the color, but um, what I did is I added buttons above each um, category so people can just print or download a PDF of just lunch specials or just breakfast specials because there's just so much to see. So each one of these has the category, what the special is, when it is, and then when you click on the individual like Casas, that, that's not us, that will take you straight to her either website or Instagram, whatever that, that may be. So everything's on here. I just have to add a wine boutique but um, really happy with it, how it's turned out. And uh, let's see, okay, so let's say, next thing, just to go over what we've been doing for marketing very quickly. Um, the Milburn Short Hills, the second tap. Um, so the printed publication, Mil Milburn Short Hills Monthly, we did the whole back cover for March. So we have some things in print out there. And then the next one is uh, tab three. Um, Milburn Short Hills, this is another pr printed publication that Steve's been working uh, on. So they had a, a little um, promo in there as well. And um, I have posters. So I think you see, um, we have these posters all over town. Um, right over there is one of the A-frame signs that are going out tomorrow. We're gonna have them in each district. And just see my street banner is up across from uh, the book house, a frames posters that we've gone over. Um, just a quick highlight with community outreach, our relationship with the school district has just been awesome and just getting better and better. So I asked Nancy Dries and she um, sent out 
restaurant week to all of this faculty and staff, which is over 800 people. So I think there'll be a lot of lunch uh, specials there and going to some of the tastings. And she's also going to uh, allow us to put printed um, uh, specials in each of the faculty lunches. So just to keep encouraging people as well. Um, that's great. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, actually, I was just saying it'd be cool to do a special teacher's bonus or something next year, right? I'd give yes. it that kind of engagement. That's like, that'd be, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Educated. Very educated. So I don't educated. honestly know which businesses have educator um, discount programs. That's a, something that to bring up. Um, and then the event listings we have in the patch and tap into. Um, and something new this year is uh, the carriage house from the paper mill. They set up all these different um, kind of culinary experiences. So there's murder mysteries. They have a wine, um, a French wine uh, dinner pairing. They have a Broadway vocalist that's performing at like a nice um, a dinner. They're doing karaoke. <laughs> um, they've already sold out a few days, but uh, we have four of them listed on the website. So very happy to have them involved. And um, one thing I wanted to talk about is, um, I think I mentioned Corinne at the last meeting. Corinne Mahoney, um, she's uh, creatives by Corinne. She also works for Real Style Exchange. Um, and I've worked with her extensively with Girls Night Out last year and she was just phenomenal. Um, and we really needed boots on the ground with Restaurant Week because what I learned last year is the restaurants of all the industries really need you to show up. Not everybody has email, not everybody checks email. You don't know who you're gonna, if it's gonna be a manager, you just don't know who you're gonna come in to see. So there just needs to be a lot of repetition. And so Corinne was that repetition, going out, getting people signed up, telling them about it, um, reinforcing it. Hey, now, did you send us your specials? Did, like, it's just a constant process. And I think that's one of the, the big um, reasons we've had such an increase in participation in specials. And then tomorrow she's going to go to each one of the participating businesses with a marketing checklist. Have you told your staff? That's a simple thing, but a lot of people don't tell their staff. Have you printed your menus? Did you post this on your social? You know, is it on your website? How are you planning on engaging people beyond their visit? Are you asking them to follow you, sign up for email, stuff like that? So we just, again, getting it in front of people, trying to make sure we're giving them every tool possible to take advantage of this. So that's happening tomorrow and um, social media. Would you pull up that PDF with the spreadsheet? So we hired five different influencers. This is as of 10 a.m. this morning. Just so, you know. so five different influencers um, doing a total of 22 reels for us. I'm sure all of you have seen them. Some are combinations of businesses. Some are just uh, business highlights. And they're also doing dozens of stories for us. So um, Jessica Chews, who you guys are familiar with, we've used her at almost every event last year. Um, her, she did our kickoff post and it has almost 25,000 uh, views uh, as of this morning. And the engagement is really great. 629 likes, 35 comments, uh, shares, 734. And then you go on. Um, Sushi Zero, this is really great. We're able to promote them. Um, they had they had almost 1,500 um, views. Uh, Jack Serpenter, if that's Eats With Them, she's a new person we work with. Someone here, bench, I, I think you told me about her. So we've worked with her on three different reels. She did Jack Serpenter first. That's almost 4,000. Vinny's Pizza, again, uh, my inner fat kid is out. He's, he's great. That's Brian. Um, so, and even... Um, uh, with Pergola, we did something a little different uh, with that one. It's kind of a test to do like a behind the scenes. And so Jessica went there, and I, if you haven't seen it, definitely go to our Instagram page and watch it. It's really neat it's watching Driola talk about her pasta and how she, how she does things. And then uh, we did a, a lunch special overview with NJ Hipsterbia that's had almost 30,000 views. So all of this is, it's just been phenomenal and it's not over. We, we're going to keep. We keep going into mid next week and then we'll do some of our own posts as well. Um, so that's that's it for right now. I'll definitely have a report for you after the fact. Um, definitely get some feedback from restaurants, but everything's going really well. Yeah. Amanda, yeah. And Steve, if there's a way to have on the KPIs, a year over year over year comparison mm -hmm. of the, even if you have a, you know, just the number of hits, the revenue, you know, the, 
the contribution and et cetera, et cetera, just so we can see, you know, it could be a, you know, a feather in your cap if it's a huge success and a feather not in your cap if it's not a huge success. But just so we can see what the performance of everything that we're doing says point. I mean, right here, it seems like it's a huge, um, um, you know, springboard, you know, of activity about to happen. You know, I've been telling everybody I see as well, and, and you know, I think everybody up here should be posting it on your social media as well, uh, and, and just you know how we push it forward and, and get people out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I agree. I mean, the nice thing about social media, especially Instagram, is the analytics are there and they're there in perpetuity. Um, and so we can go back, see what we did last year. And we've probably done more reels this year than all last year combined. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we can definitely start tracking that. Yeah. And, I, um, and I would ask the vendors or the restaurateurs mm -hmm. to give you kind of a you know year over year uh, revenue you know glimpse as well, because that's where the rubber meets the road for them, right? Right. And then, you know, they're paying taxes as well. So it keeps us, it helps everyone. Well, and that helps tell us how, but I mean, these kinds of events are great because it, it's the status of the SID as well that we're putting on this type of an event. Exactly, exactly. So you have to have a story. This is the foundation for that story. And it's the shop local story. Right. Uh, and we want to make sure that we're continuing to press forward you know, during the entire year. But specifically now, you can have those a direct microcosm of what's happening during that period. And we're going to survey all the participating restaurants for what, how their experience was as well, um, just because we tried to improve that experience for them. So I just want to see, you know, what else we can tweak moving forward. And I think last year, I'm not sure if you guys did such a big social media Right. Alexa just into the it, it was yeah. a little bit before yeah. and it was during so almost all of this is before we've got a couple That's things fine. going up Monday and Tuesday Listerada is going to get posted Wednesday because Anthony um, the influencer said that's the best day for for pizza mm -hmm. so um, yeah yeah, yeah. 8, 85,000 plays before the events even started yeah. so Amanda was right on target and I to think do the, the first one with how many shares Scott. Yeah, that's really phenomenal results. That's a lot of people sending that reel. Yeah. yeah. And the, the promise I made to all the restaurants, because last year we, we just couldn't include everybody and in everything when it, when it came to the influencers, was that I will, I will include you in one, at least one of the, so everyone that's wanted to be in is in. Um, so that's almost 40 restaurants are covered here and, and then one's coming up in the next five days. Yeah. And, uh, uh, also, too, is uh, you know, even if you get somebody to hand out cards at the train station, too, because when we come off the train, no one really wants to cook. Mm -hmm. you, know, they, you know, they can just jump downtown or have a family meet them at the train. I know we've done that before. You, know, you just walk over and meet everyone at the train and walk over. I'll see what I can do with yeah. that just because it's a little later in the game, but we are putting the A trains <clears throat> at each um, of the stations. Okay, well, that, that'll work, too. And not to break my arm, patting myself on the back, but <laughs> I went to Susan Zero and called her directly from there, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, you got it done. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> God puts his money where his mouth is. Exactly. Okay, so that is restaurant week and social media. Um, next step, let me move forward through this quickly. So I believe we mentioned it last week. We have a new strategic partnership with uh, the neighbors group of Milburn Short Hills. They're kind of the welcome group. Um, and so what we wanted to do, we had a couple of businesses on Upper Milburn Ave say, you know, we want to do something new uh, marketing wise. So we're having a neighbor's night out. And so the neighbors are inviting their members to come out and we're having kind of a stroll. And so we have Studio 1200 uh, Stone and Tiles Design the Shade Place, Tiger Showman's, and possibly uh, the Coder School. And um, what they're each gonna do, and I'll read an example. Um, Studio 1200 is gonna have blood orange cocktails with non-alcoholic versions, cheese from Summit Cheese Shop, gluten-free treats from Taste Buddy, a raffle for complimentary two-hour design consultations, and a Studio 1200 swag bag with vintage items, a bingo set, jump rope, jacks, record coasters, et cetera. So they're trying to make it enticing. Neighbors are doing the same thing that like we need stuff to pull people out. 
So we're looking forward to seeing how this goes. Um, and you're all invited to come. I know we invited the advisory board. I'll do that again. But other than that, it's just the neighbors inviting their members, which they said from time to time is 200 to 300 families that are they've contacted. So just right. another those way. are families, what, 12 months in? or They've either just in? moved here or they've been Three, here. For, six months so in. they switched then They switched their model. They were okay. just newcomers. Four years in. Yeah. And uh, so they changed it to um, neighbors so that it's the people actually didn't want to leave the group, but it was like they were almost aging out of it. So they, they rebranded everything last year and made it so that people that are here more than a year can, can stay on because they're enjoying the camaraderie. Right, but you would almost figure that even the, the short list you just gave, they're selling their services to these people. And that's why they're going to summit cheese and wine and such. And they're going to put, they're going to invest in that event. Absolutely. So you want to make sure that these people may purchase the service. Right. You want to, don't want to mismatch it with people who just want free wine and cheese. Right. And, and it was targeted. Yeah. You know, we picked, so this actually started from a conversation that we had with the Shade Place, which if you remember, um, we, had a, we had a mixer there last year because they right. just opened. Yeah. Um, and their next door neighbor is Stone and Tile. And we said, all right, this is sort of a home design. Right. It, home makes, it makes a lot of sense. I yeah. just want to make sure that you don't throw this event, you know, 40 people show up who've been in their houses for 10 years and are done right. and are ready to spend money on doing a, a $50,000 kitchen. And then, yeah, that's, and, that's not the case. Yeah. So, okay. um, and, and, then, and then we'd like to replicate this because it's really a 90 minute or so event. Yeah. So you're making these quick stops and, you know, hopefully if this works, we can do it again in different right. neighborhoods where, you know, you're just doing three or four stops in an hour and a half and, it really is pretty inexpensive and pretty simple to set up. Um, it just requires that strategic partner, the neighbors group. So this will be a good test. Run. Yeah, it's a test. We'll see how it goes. They can tell us what the engagement is like. And then, you know, we can do that in different spots. Um, so that's March 26th at 730. Yep. Um, and so we're meeting at where are we starting? We're starting at Studio 1200. And um, and then we're moving just literally up, up Upper Milburn Ave. Um, so I, I think it's going to be a nice evening. Um, so that's the neighbor's night out, uh, wellness week. Um, I don't have a lot of updates, but I will, I wanted to explain a little bit more. Uh, we had talked last week for the elementary school, uh, wellness week is going to be in an assembly style and the topics that are being covered is self-care fitness. And we're still, um, deciding on that third one. And then the middle school is doing a help, going to do like a health fair where so many kids can sit at one place for a 10 or 15 minute presentation. Then they move on to the next one. And it's like this rotating group. They're doing self-care concerning technology because a lot of kids have problems with their necks and, and things with their phones. Um, skin care for teens and skin care for athletes. I think I talked to you about this last time that trying to use sensitivity in dealing with hygiene. So that's the way we're going to go about it. Um, and then we also have the faculty lounges uh, that are going to have art projects for them um, all week long. So uh, that's happening as well. I will have a much more detailed report for you at the next board meeting. Um, but again, another great partnership, you know, uh, and I think this is just going to continue to grow another Nancy Drees thing. Um, so moving on to founding day, Jackie, I'm sure you want to well, I, I mean, you can kick us. I, I can, I'll, I'll get started and you, okay. where you can I fill can in the, the blanks. I can do the yeah. stuff if you want to do everything else. Um, well, you do, well, the date is tomorrow for the mill wheel design uh, deadline, is my mm -hmm. understanding. And we've already gotten three already. I, I actually got another one today. Four or five as of an hour ago. Okay, great. So there are 12 mm -hmm. um, groups committed mm -hmm. to, uh, to doing mill wheels. Um, which is great. And we've asked them for a really uh, rigorous detail on the design to make sure that we have all the materials that they will need and also to make sure that they are engaged in the process mm -hmm. for robust design, if you will. Um, pick up, Amanda is gonna spearhead April 3rd and 4th is right. Yep. Um, drop off decorated wheels May 1st, 2nd. Um, Michael Cooper, who uh, was the artist on All Together Now and is helping partner with us, will be applying a protective coating over the next 10 days. And May 18th is Mill Wheel 
Taylor Park 100th year celebration, uh, May 18th, 12 to three with a rain date of the 19th. Um, please also know we have um, a variety of community partners, including historic, um, environmental commission um, that will be participating in some day of activities. We will have period music. There'll be some tours. Um, am I missing anything? Something I, the only thing I'd say is we held a, um, a stencil and painting yeah. workshop at Bauer Center for the 12 organizations, anyone that needed to get more comfortable with painting or using stencils. And we had several groups come, so that was really helpful. That's all I've got. Great. Um, and then girls night out, I will have a, a much more detailed report at the next meeting, but just another reminder, it is June 6th. And that's it for me. Great. All right, and then there's the stuff that I do all day. Um, <laughs> so um, one of the new reports um, that, that Tracy asked me to include on a recurring basis is a new business is closed businesses. Um, we used to do this kind of quarterly or so, but uh, just to keep you guys in the loop. Uh, thus far this year, we've had seven new businesses open, including three storefronts. Uh, so Sushi Zero at Milburn and Lackawanna, Curious Kids on Spring Street. They just got their brand new sign. So uh, you can go check that out. And then Rossi Paints is at 8 Main Street. Um, four businesses have closed this year. So Suburban Paint was sold to Rossi Paint. So that's just a kind of a one for one wash. Uh, the Sunoco on Upper Milburn Avenue closed after the passing of the owner, which we, we talked about previously. And AKT Fitness on Morris Turnpike um, just closed. There was some financial issues between the franchisee and the, the parent company. Um, the fourth one is Just Collect, uh, which opened maybe two years ago or so up at uh, Milburn and Holmes. Um, I spoke to the, the building owner um, and he said that they're currently in litigation with the tenant. Um, so he wouldn't explain what happened, but if anything, uh, does come up, I'll let you know. Um, on the positive side, uh, we, we've had numerous projects that are underway, including Sugaring NYC, um, which is uh, fitting out its space over by the old President's Club, just down the road here. Um, there's two recently signed leases at the Futter space. So fingers crossed. Um, I saw two by Forrest in there. Yeah, so. <laughs> well, do we know what the leases, what they are? Yeah, are so. Uh, why don't we wait a month? And I'll tell you about it because I don't want to jinx it. Yeah, because I'm, I'm like, oh, for my last 16, every time I told people they were coming in. Um, there's a lease uh, underway for the former Elephant Plate. Um, and they're doing some fit out there. And then there's two projects that are underway on Upper Milburn. Uh, the former Bridal Shop, uh, which is uh, slated to become a boutique supermarket. That's the 565 space. Um, and then there's uh, the new Signature Realty. Um, is under construction and hopefully with some warm weather, um, that project will be completed. Uh, that's exactly. at the corner of Milburn and Baltus Roll. Is that the old yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. they've gutted the entire building, and, um, but it's, it's coming along quickly. Um, we also, of course, have new construction that has to get filled. Um, so I've been working quite actively on sending tenants uh, to the representatives at the old uh, Wells Fargo, which is now called the Hearth at Milburn, and then the former Milburn feed store, which is right across the street here. Our former board member, Nadej Nickel, uh, owns that building. And uh, we have some good news. Uh, ben and I have been working quite hard on attracting a golf simulator to Nadej's building. And uh, they are going to be appearing in front of the zoning board relatively soon um, to get their approvals. But uh, there's one operation in Chatham. They have another in Montclair, and we would be the third um, in the network. But Ben and I have had a chance to go and meet with the owner, see his facility, and uh, I think it's going to be an absolutely incredible addition to downtown. Um, so uh, we're thrilled with that. And then um, in the 12 weeks since the start of the year, I've actually received 10 real estate inquiries from businesses looking to come to Milburn. So we're talking about almost one a week, uh, which is a terrific rate. And um, just on the uh, next month will be the biannual state of the SID. But because of those uh, closures with AKT, the Sunoco, um, the vacancy rate is at 4.8%, which funny enough is the exact same as it was in March of last year, um, and a little bit higher than the all-time low, which was 3.26 um, in our last report in October. So we're at 4.8. Some strange things have happened, obviously, with, with debts and things, but um, you know we're still in a great situation. And I think as these new spaces come online at, at the hearth and the feed store, um, we're just going to keep bringing in some, some really exciting tenants. Um, education program update. So we've had 
two programs completed thus far. We did one with the New Jersey Economic Development Administration Authority on small business uh, grant programs that was really well attended. And then one with David Sorkin from New Frontier on the NJEDA uh, free website program that was last week. The third session is actually a week from tomorrow. It's Friday, March 22nd at 8.30 a.m. on Zoom. Uh, Jeff Bueller, who is from the New Jersey Business Action Center, is presenting on some of the programs they offer. Um, that includes mentoring assistance, grants and loans, uh, licensing and professional certifications, um, as well as labor and workforce assistance. So it's a pretty diverse presentation, uh, not just for retail, but for really anybody in the, in the CID. Um, and I certainly, I strongly encourage all the board members, advisory committee members, elected officials to attend this one because Jeff formerly ran the Main Street program um, for the state. And he's got a wealth of information about small business development and about community development. So um, I think this is not just for business owners, but really anybody that's interested in economic development. Um, so that's Friday, March 22nd at 8.30. And I'll share that Zoom link with everyone. Um, and then finally, Jeff and his team are going to be coming back May 23rd for a two hour symposium that we are hosting with the chamber. It's gonna be at the Short Hills Hilton. Um, so it's gonna be three o'clock to five o'clock symposium with the Business Action Center and a couple of other organizations. And then we're gonna do a mixer for SID businesses and chamber businesses from five to seven. So that's May 23rd and just you know, mark that on your calendar but more information will come out about that. So um, educational programs are going very well. Um, any questions before I go on to the parking committee? Friday, March 22nd, 8.30 a.m. That's Zoom. On Zoom. So I'll share that. Okay. And May 23rd. That's from 3 to 7 at the Short Hills Hilton. 3 to 5 and then 5 to 7. Correct. And that's in partnership with the Chamber. Actually, all of our education programs are in partnership with the Chamber this year. Um, but this one is the only kind of in-person mixer that we're doing. But I think between the two organizations, we'll have a really nice turnout. Parking committee. So we've got a couple quick items. So I am on the township's parking committee and um, <clears throat> we had a meeting about a, probably not even a month ago. Um, we are gonna be adding the Explore logo to all the pay stations um, to promote the SID. Most towns have their SID logo. Um, so we're actually just uh, waiting on specs from the operator of the pay stations and then we'll send them whatever resolution uh, JPEG they need. Um, we also dealt with, uh, Mr. Feld brought up a, an issue in January that the 15 minute parking option was not the free 15 minutes that we have on the streets was not showing up at lot 14 on Upper Milburn Avenue. So he was half correct as we, as we discovered, because yes, it wasn't showing up, but that's because the lots do not have 15 minute free parking. Um, so we decided if it's good enough for the streets, it's good enough for the lots. So now um, we're working with the programmers to add free 15 minutes in lot one, two, four, five, and 14. Um, so one is where the clock tower is, two is the parking deck, uh, four and five are right here near town hall, and then 14 is on Upper Milburn Avenue. So um, a good catch on his part, and uh, uh, we, we are now adding it not just to the streets, but to those five lots. Yeah. Um, at the last township committee meeting, uh, Jerry Kung, uh, he had made a... Uh, Yes, I guess a public comment yeah. uh, that, and it was actually, it was very good comment is um, to arbitrage or get more people to use the new parking deck, just drop the rates there significantly compared to the other rates for on the street parking to drive business into that deck. And even if we did it for six months or so, see if it really does drive the business because there's so many, so many empty spots you know, on the second, third level, I know the top level's yeah. under construction now, but, you know, let's just keep that filed in the back of our head or in your head but as you're on the parking committee. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the real challenge is parking is 50 cents an hour, so it's not as if it's prohibitively expensive, right? Um, the parking deck is underutilized primarily because of its location, right? It is not actually within the central business district. Um, and so I think if the parking deck where it were today where the municipal parking lot is right here, right? Where the, the staff parks between the hearth and here, you'd have a much different user. Um, and I think your usership rates would go up. Um, I think it's, it's something that we talk about a lot is how we can impact and, and better use the parking deck. We've actually changed the way that uh, the parking spaces are allocated. It used to be majority uh, workers and fewer shoppers, but we've noticed that 
in terms of who purchases the passes, um, the shoppers need more parking. So we flipped it uh, to try to make it easier. Um, I, I think, yeah, it's, it's definitely a conversation that we need to have about continuing to activate that parking deck. Um, I just wish it was in a different location, if I'm honest. I think if it was closer to the, you know, the Milburn main intersection, certainly it would be more popular. But, um, yeah, I'll, I'll bring it up at our next uh, parking meeting and see what we can do. Yeah, and, you know, uh, once parking becomes a little more extreme, people will walk that two and a half blocks. I mean, most of, I, know, I know most people in this days uh, who work in Manhattan or worked in Manhattan know, but know the, the problems with parking, so walking six blocks, eight blocks. Um, Alex McDonald also requested that the police department assess the viability of converting um, the town hall parking lot that you all park in uh, into a one way. Um, part of the concern is that we have a lot of cut through traffic and we're concerned. There's a lot of teen drivers that come here after high school and it's a very, very tight lot. And so no action, you know, is planned at this point. We're just getting data, but we want to see average speed. Um, do we know if cars are just passing through? Are they stopping? Um, we may consider doing some sort of one way structure where um, cars are forced to go to the right when they come in off of Milburn Avenue. Maybe we're just gonna make um, the exit onto Milburn Avenue one way and you can only enter from Essex. So then that kind of plays into the Essex Street two way conversion. So there's a whole host of stuff that we have to figure out, but um, we've started that process at least about trying to make that a safer place for pedestrians. Um, we also worked uh, with the town sign shop would you mind getting our sign? Um, so as you all know, in front of the Milburn Deli, Goldbergs, Pliables, um, there's a lot of double parking. We've dealt with it quite a bit because of the angle parking that has been installed. Um, but, oh, she's strong. Um, we still have a problem with delivery drivers occupying parking spaces and just standing, it's literally, you know, the car is standing, waiting for an order to come in on their phone. So they don't have anywhere else to go. So what Alex came up with is we have a surplus of parking spots on Essex Street um, near the former Andy says, and they're just kind of in no man's land because there's really no, it's the backs of businesses that are there, but the business is all a parking lot. So they don't really need those spaces. So we've now put up signs that actually match this that say this is delivery driver parking. And so the police officer is going to be pushing them to that area. And then we're going to place these two signs, which match that sign um, on Milburn Ave trying to encourage people go up, make a left, park on Essex, and then just come back around. So hopefully that'll free up some of the parking spots for customers as opposed to delivery drivers. Um, and then we do have some email blasts and social posts coming up about the shopper parking passes. Um, if you are a resident, you can purchase a $60 annual pass, uh, which many people do not do, but um, you can park on streets and lots without paying the meters. But Alex will make me say by contract, time limits do apply. <laughs> um, but for 60 bucks, you can park um, in, in any part of town um, and not have to feed the meter. So um, it's a good deal. So we'll, we'll get that messaging out as well. Um, any questions on parking? And you already changed it quarterly as well. Was that last year? Yes. So um, we have. For we, stores. Yeah, we, we have right now, you, have, you can buy an annual pass or a quarterly gotcha. pass. Um, and then we actually, we've been talking to some business owners um, people are feeding the meter. And, you know, if you work three days for eight hours, it's cheaper just to buy the quarterly pass than to pay the parking meter. And so we're trying to get that word out to people because I think in their minds, they think they're saving money by paying the parking meter, but the price isn't that expensive, especially when you break it down by quarter. Um, so we're, we're just constantly telling people buy the passes, buy the passes. Um, in terms of infrastructure. So, Sidewalk sales are on the agenda for the meeting on Tuesday. Uh, the resolution needs to be approved on an annual basis. So Ben, this is your first time uh, asked to approve this. Um, it's something we do every year. Um, it allows retail sidewalk sales from May 4th to September 29th. Um, and the resolution uh, will be provided in your packet. It's something that's been approved unanimously in years past and it's just a nice addition to the town. So that'll be on your agenda for Tuesday. Um, outdoor dining and seating applications have been produced by the municipal clerk, um, and they have been provided to all the food establishments via email and hard copy. So that's anybody that puts up tables and chairs outside their space. Um, they are limited to the sidewalks and the adjacent spaces of the businesses. The Main Street Pedestrian Mall um, applications are separate. I know that's come up as a question, so I just wanted to answer that. If 
A business wants to have a table in the mall itself on the street. It's a separate application, separate fee. Um, so the ones that are coming in now are just for people that have it immediately in front of their business. Um, and then an announcement on the downtown circulation improvement plan. Uh, so we had talked about this a number of times. I'm on the committee that's been looking at converting Essex Street into a two-way street. Um, we've been working with Collier's Engineering to determine the viability of that. Um, the whole goal really is to ease congestion, increase accessibility, um, and promote economic development, especially on Essex Street. So um, Alex has, has put me in charge of preparing the presentation, uh, which will be made to the public on Wednesday, the 27th of March. So um, I guess just a little under two weeks from now. And that will be at 8 p.m. Uh, here in the committee chamber. So Essex Street, two-way downtown circulation, Wednesday, March 27th, 8 p.m. here at council chambers and uh, encourage all of you to attend. This is a, a really important piece of, of trying to restructure the downtown, especially with the new development that's happening. We need to really modernize the, the road circulation. And, uh, Colliers has done a really good job and there's some really good people on this committee uh, that have been working now almost two years on it. So this will be kind of the end, hopefully. Um, any questions on that before we get to the RFP for um, sidewalk maintenance? Um, I have something to say. Please. Um, for the outdoor dining applications, is there a way we can get them earlier? Because like today is a beautiful day. It would have been really nice to have chairs out. Maybe like in the winter. What would be an ideal time for you? February 15th? Yeah, beginning of the year. Makes sense. Yeah. I will let the clerk know. Uh, okay, so then attachment four yep. in your packets is a maintenance RFP. Um, so hopefully you've all had a chance to review it. Um, so this program is funded through a $20,000 allocation that we have from the town. That's going to be given to explore. It's actually through the New Jersey Clean Communities Program. I think the town gets about $43,000 or so a year from clean communities. They use a portion of it for public works. Um, and then they've now given us the other $20,000, uh, which is actually approved in our budget for this year. Um, and so, you know, as we have more events, more people, more businesses, um, the, the maintenance really is, is now, I think, beyond the manpower of public works. And we saw that certainly last year with the pedestrian mall. Um, you know, every Sunday the garbage was piled up because there were just so many people. So um, good problem to have, but you need a solution. So I went to Alex and asked him if we could allocate these funds, um, which he agreed to. So the RFP that's in front of you um, is for street sweeping, um, you know, literally a broom and a, and a pail, um, graffiti removal and area maintenance from May to August. So this is a pilot program. Um, this is the first time we've tried it, but the, the idea is to put this out to a private vendor who could provide these services. I've also broken down in the RFP, the frequency. So it'll be for all five districts of the SID. Um, and I tried to make, make the frequency relevant to the, the foot traffic. So downtown uh, two times a week. And one of those days must either be a Saturday or a Sunday morning, um, which will uh, match up you know, certainly with the weekend traffic. Upper Milburn is the second most uh, foot traffic uh, area. So that'll be one time a week, Short Hill Station two times a month. Wyoming and Morris, um, they have very little foot traffic, it's mostly vehicular, um, and, and also most of the property is private anyway, so they have their own cleanup crews. Um, so one time a month just to do those two. Um, so I asked Mr. Cooper to review this. He made um, some minor edits, and really at this point, it's just about um, getting feedback from you guys, any questions. Um, I did leave the RFP uh, response date as a TBD, um, but I'd like to get this out as soon as possible to vendors. So um, any questions or uh, the only action really would be just to- A voice vote, yeah. A voice vote to authorize me to distribute this. Yes, uh, the only uh, comment, well, any, does anybody else from the board have a comment and then I can make my comment. I, but, I have one question, you got it. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, I had a quick question, a little outside the scope of cleaning, but I know we've spoken many times about those loose bricks and things also on the sidewalk, which in some cases are hazardous, people can trip. That's outside the scope of this, but has have we has anything moved forward with respect to fixing those issues? Yeah, um, so it depends. About sidewalks. No, no, it's, it's actually good. So there is actually a reporting component of this. Um, so we've asked the vendor to report any issues that are above their scope. So at least Public Works is notified. Um, 
it depends on where you are, right? So there's some areas where the brick is privately owned. And so if we get a report, we have to go to the private owner. Um, if it is on a public sidewalk and we get a report, it usually goes through um, the SDL portal, which I know Ben is a big fan of. Um, we encourage people, put in the SDL portal, public <coughs> will be notified that there's a deficiency in the sidewalk and then they could go out and repair it. Okay. Yeah. Great. We got to get rid of the brick sidewalks is what well, we need to do. Ultimately. Um, <laughs> ultimately get rid of them. Tracy? I was just interested to know like how we choose who this will go to and are there actually, are there businesses in the SID within the SID that There's be, one um, business that would. Vendors to be considered and how else do we yeah, I have a list of, this? I have a list of 10 that I've been okay. able to find um, through various resources. Um, I think 10 is a fair number to get it out oh. there. And, um, one of those businesses is within the city. We don't have many um, yeah, type sure. of the, types of these businesses in yeah. the city, but um, I'll come back to you guys. Hopefully, uh, yeah, we could do it at the April meeting. You can make a decision, and then um, we can award that contract and proceed in May. Right. But but I think yeah, I mean, so it's price, but mm -hmm. then maybe uh, Scudder's a recommendation. Sure. You know that kind of stuff, right? Like, what would be the criteria for choosing? I think Tracy, that's what you're. Yeah, I mean that's certainly an additional important. Yeah, yeah, I, I would want to confirm that it meets yes. our best practices. Yeah, uh, for selection selection of a vendor, and also as well that um, DPW would not want to submit as well to do this to do this. Why would they not? This is a supplement to that. Uh, yeah. I, I understand, but as even as a supplement, there's they wouldn't want to. It's a separate it's a work over it's time. Grant. I, I yeah. understand, but even for twenty grand, but I don't understand what, what you're asking. So, like public works as an agency, right? As a department, correct. Um, they don't. Have, they don't really have the manpower. They don't I mean, have the manpower. Okay, so you end up would, paying overtime. Well, yeah, right. But even if they're paying overtime, you know, their familiar their familiarity with the township and you know shop local. You know, they're as local as they get. Uh, so, uh, you know, just a discussion I have with Alex and with the head of DPW to see if they did would want to do it, I would think. Yeah, I can ask. Certainly doesn't doesn't hurt. I right. think also, depending on the prices that come back, we probably lose hours of, of maintenance, right? If, depending on how much DPW is. Yeah. Private vendors would probably be cheaper, but we might as well ask. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, I, I would just... I would just encourage that the scope uh, run through Labor Day um, rather than August, September 3rd, okay. or because August 30th, what, but I would say September 3rd or the second. Yeah. And, and those dates may end up having to be a bit malleable because, right. again, this is a finite budget, right? And so we have to look at it by week. And so we may not be able to get to that number of weeks. We may have to shorten it. So that's something that I'll be able to bring back to you guys once I get the RFP responses. I just wanted to add to, to address the questions. Um, it's spelled out that it's a qualitative evaluation, not a quantitative, uh, so which, I, which I think is what the comments were getting at. It is not strictly lowest bidder. You, you are to evaluate, uh, you're free to evaluate not just the price, but also um, uh, a number of other characteristics of the bid that it will inform your decision as to who the best vendor is. I believe that was the question, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is so this I, something that a lot of other towns utilize this type of service? Yeah, so um, it's, it's, it's a great question. Um, a lot of towns do give the SID the money from clean communities to do this work. Um, ideally, the SID should be more efficient right, than, than the municipality. That's the point of improvement districts, right? We can go out and hire vendors. We don't have to go through the same uh, bidding process that municipalities do. Um, so we could be a lot quicker and nimble about it. Um, some bids, especially in lower income areas, do have the ability to access state funds that we don't have access to, like the Neighborhood Preservation Program. Um, that's something that a lot of lower income communities can tap into, and um, they can reach twenty, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars for those types of things. Plus, um, that program, you can put in shade trees, you can do uh, street furniture, um, Unfor well, fortunately, we are not a low-income community that qualifies for that program. But um, to answer your question, just sort of in the macro of what SIDS do, um, a lot, especially in this part of the state where you do have lower-income communities, they tap into resources that we're not eligible for. So they do it, they just use different funding mechanisms. 
So we do need a voice vote, though. Yes. So a motion, uh, motion a second, and uh, a roll call vote, please. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the resolution supporting the part of? <laughs> may I have a, a voice vote for the district-wide sidewalk maintenance RFP as highlighted in attachment four? With, with those minor uh, corrections about Labor Day, and I'll add also references just in case I yeah. missed it. And probably you could, well, right, May May 1st, May 8th, I don't know, whatever. I think we'll, we'll find out. Yeah, okay. Uh, all those in favor? Wait, so I'm sorry, I, I, just to be technical. So that was a motion. That was a motion. I need a second. Thank, please. Yes. Thank you. There was the motion. Was you, Jackie? Yes. Second. Second by Alyssa. And we wanted a roll call vote? So either, either is fine. Either uh, a roll call or, or just a yeas and nays. Whatever right. you prefer. I'll do the roll call. Right. It's a quick list. Alexa Clark. Yes. Tracy Cassidy. Yes. Jackie Benjamin Lieberberg. Yes. Ben Stoller. Yes. Ashley is not present. Stephen Weiner. Yes. And Ashley is not present. How do you join us? That's what yeah. 7.30. Just checking. We're actually moving faster on the phone. Okay. Um, Just checking. And then the final item. Um, so is that the completion of the roll, sir? That was. Okay. Thank you. So the final item, uh, I know at our last meeting I had mentioned that I was trying to find some funds to and, and get a scope for uh, an improvement on Morris Turnpike in that area between the curb and the sidewalk. Um, I got a project scope from a, a vendor and it it was it far exceeded what we were able to spend. Uh, we do have two grants that are currently under consideration um, with two different foundations. So if those hit, that'll change the scope a little bit. Um, what I would like to do um, and this is not urgent because this is a hardscaping project. So it's just rock. It's not plants or grass because they don't hold up well as we've learned out there. Um, this is something that could be done in the third quarter of the year. Um, but once we have an idea of our, of our funding availability as well as whether those grants hit, um, I'd like to, if, even if it has to be scaled, um, at least start that project. So that, that's on my back burner at the moment. And um, we will get something done on Morris Turnpike and the hardscaping, um, but it's just going to be a, a budget issue more than anything else. So wanted to just give you an update on that because we spoke about it. Um, and that concludes my executive director's report. Um, but I know we have the Main Street resolution. Yes. Do you want to say anything, Jackie, or do you want me just to... Why don't, I, why don't you kick us off and then okay. I have some comments and I'd like to share with their board. Okay, so this is, uh, as you see, attachment five in your packets. This is a resolution supporting a partnership with the Historic Preservation Commission. Um, and so as I was developing the Main Street application, right, the one that we just submitted, um, I requested letters of support from various organizations in the town. Uh, we got one from the Art Advisory Committee, CETA, Historical Society, the Milburn Neighbors, Paper Mill, Senator McKeon, and the Chamber of Commerce. And then we also expect a letter uh, on Monday from the Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, but related to that, Jackie and I have met with the Historic Preservation Chair, Allison Canfield, as well as the Township Committee Liaison, which is uh, Frank Sacamandi. Uh, we've had some really, really productive meetings about the need for uh, HPC to engage with the city um, on, a, on a more uh, frequent and more detailed basis. And so um, they've asked us to form a more significant partnership. And we think that's a good thing for economic development. Um, how this relates back to the Main Street application. Um, so you don't have to have a designated historic district in your Main Street district to be considered for the application. It certainly helps, but it's not a requirement. Um, and so what we've, we've gotten to is there's definitely opportunities to designate areas within the downtown, which is our main street district, as well as other areas within the SID as a whole. Um, HPC wants to advance those efforts, which is certainly within their mission, um, but where they could really use our expertise is the communication, the relationships that we have. Uh, we certainly have a much larger social media presence email presence and relationship with property owners. And so um, tonight, what, what we're asking for is, a, is for you to authorize this resolution, which simply codifies that we're going to have a formal relationship uh, with the Historic Preservation Commission. And um, I'll read it into the, I'll read the resolution uh, well, for the record and then we can discuss it. Or do you yeah. want to do that? 
Yeah, well, you could okay. you could do that, and then I have some comments about the uh, revision. And I just wanna, I'd like to share with the board. Sure, I just want to clarify, um, and I want to read this so I, I get all my words right. Just keep in mind that this is this resolution is not meant to infer that Explorer is responsible for initiating the process of any historic district designation. Uh, we are simply committing to collaborate with the Historic Preservation Commission to educate property owners and business owners about two specific plan designations which were initiated by HPC, as well as overall engagement and edu education in the future. Um, and you'll, there's five points to this resolution, so I'll, I'll make note of those. I'm sorry, just in one last time. <clears throat> so, sorry, correct? Correct. Yeah. So with those two facts, I just wanted to let you know, you, there's no obligation, there's no requirement that you read it as a matter of procedure for approving the resolution. Okay. So, then let me just read the action items, um, and I'll, I'll spare you all the whereasses. Um, so item one, um, so it says Explore will provide support to the HPC on an ongoing basis to advance the following efforts on an as needed basis. One, collaborate as requested by HPC in the creation of a historic designation for Taylor Park in downtown Milburn. Two, collaborate as requested by HPC in the creation of a historic district for the quote Short Hills Village, which includes the Short Hills Station District of the Sid. Short Hills train station and nearby parking lots. Three, work with HPC to examine future designation proposals in the SID to ensure that both historic preservation and economic development goals are met. Four, work with the HPC to advance educational outreach to property owners to help create a better understanding of historic preservation policies and benefits. And five, work with the HPC to engage property and business owners who may be interested in historic design standards preservation and programmatic services related to their properties. Okay. So I've read through this several times and based upon my experience on both the TC and as well as on Explore, I recognize that we are not a land use board and we are really a communication partner uh, to HPC and to the TC and we are not an ordinance driver. Um, so my recommendation, and I, I want to share this with the board and would like your feedback, is rather than say we are collaborate as requested, I would like to say that we will assist in public engagement as requested by HPC and assist in public engagement as requested for, for Taylor Park in downtown Melbourne and assist in public engagement as requested by HPC during the proposed creation of the historic district for Short Hills Village, which includes the Short Hills Station District of the SID. So I think that those um, uh, clarification, if you will, will, um, will put the SID in the light that it is as a, as I mentioned, as a advise, more in an advisory capacity and a communication partner rather than uh, ordinance driver. So I think- Jackie, this, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to just understand exactly what you're recommending to change. Right? I'm recommending to change, collaborate as requested. To assist. Assist in public okay. engagement. I have it written. So And I then can, what are you- and then what about regarding three, four, and five? Are you three, four, and five would stay as, as they are. Because I feel like I have actually some questions about it. Well, okay, yeah, I, yeah. that's I, fine. I got a lot of, yeah. That's so, fine. Um, so I'm sorry, did I like interrupt you? Well, that, that's okay. I'm sorry. I, the, the, the other thing that I think I just want to, so Steve, yes. it, so the Taylor Park designation as historic is not, um, it's not a, a qualification for the Main Street application. I just want to make sure. No, you do not have to have either a, so remember the Main Street district that we've applied for yep. is only the downtown section of the bid. Mm -hmm. You do not have to have a historic designation of that district, nor do you have to have a specific site. While there is a significant historic preservation component, um, that is part of the Main Street effort, right? To implement historic preservation um, opportunities when you have the designation. But in terms of the actual application, 
there's no requirement that you have a historic district or that you have a historic. And our application is in. So whatever we do here, you know, with respect mm -hmm. to aligning our efforts or communication, whatever relationship we choose to establish with the HPC really will not impact our pending application. No, is that it, right? no it will not. The, the application okay. is a standalone. Okay. Um, whatever HPC does tomorrow, next week, a hundred years from now. So, it, so it then should we, I'm like, I don't, we should consider how we feel about the designation of Taylor Park or the area near the station. I'm good with like helping to serve as a conduit with communicating, putting them in touch with the businesses. That's fine. We know them. Yeah. That's, I think what Jack was getting, but anything more than that, helping, you know, I started marking this up and saying, well, reasonably and trying to, as requested by like Jackie picked up, that seems kind of broad, put my lawyer hat on a little bit. Like, I, I guess I, I feel myself a little uncomfortable because I, I don't know how that would help or hurt or be neutral with respect to businesses, right? I kind of like the idea of having Taylor Park as a historic district, but I don't know what that means with our ability to improve the building that's there, Bower Center. Like, can we, at some point, could the town rebuild it or is it sort of frozen in time because it's now a historic Building. But I, I think I, you're, I don't, like, you're, you're asking a question really for the township committee as opposed to the but, city. But we're being asked to sort of support that, which is a foregone conclusion that we haven't mm -hmm. talked yeah. about or thought about. I so, think I'm, yeah, I want to talk no, about no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I think I'm just having a lot of the same feelings as I'm, you know, we read our mission statement at the beginning of our meetings. I'm concerned that this is going way beyond our scope, as we said, us assisting in communicating to businesses, that's certainly within our scope. Well, uh, but I feel, oh, sorry, I just wanted to finish one thing. Um, but I'm concerned that we don't know, I mean, I'm just not familiar personally at all with the HPC guidelines and all the pros and cons of the historic districts. And Taylor Park, I mean, we love Taylor Park. It's a key part of town, but I don't, it's not actually part of the city area, right? Correct. The park is separate. I'm just concerned that it, this feels outside of our scope and to say we're going to um, work to ensure historic preservation and economic development goals are met. We have one set of goals, HPC has another set of goals, and there may come a time when what they're recommending is not consistent with what we would want to advocate for for businesses and we might not be able to come to like a meeting of the minds. I guess I just don't totally understand. It sounds like more collaboration is a, is a nice idea and a good idea and us helping with communication to businesses makes sense. But I don't totally understand why we need like an official resolution. So, uh, I would okay. offer up that the TC of which I'm liaison from the TC is that the TC are the elected officials by the residents. Uh, and they are the only ones who can, and you can technically correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Cooper, uh, who can actually effectuate an ordinance or a resolution. So that being the point, this HPC or the CID has no real power to pass an ordinance or a resolution. What the TC is asking for input from collaboration, hence input, from HPC slash other boards. So anything that comes up is not going to be passed by the SID or by HPC. The only people who can make decisions, governing decisions, are elected officials, which are the TC and the Board of Education in the township of Milner. So I, I totally agree. The, the only clarifying point is I agree with the ordinances. A resolution is just a, a statement of, oh. of policy for the board making the resolution. So um, without opining at all on the substance of your comments, you the, this board can pass a resolution on any number of projects. Right. It is binding only on this board as a matter of this board's view. Right, so contextually I meant on the township. Yeah, yeah, if, if it, any resolution this board passes can have any binding effect on any 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 agency or department of the township. Okay, good. So, yeah, which I think is your point. Which is my point, clarify. correct, correct. So what I believe this resolution is, being asked to do is not to assist, but to collaborate and get the points forward from the perspective of the special improvement district and the business, you know, the business improvement district. 
which is in fact why we exist. Why this district exists is to have someone representing the small businesses and the businesses of Melbourne Short Hills. So unless we don't want them to have a voice at the table to collaborate with- However, it says that we're gonna collaborate on the creation of the historic district. Yeah, it's, it's a foregone conclusion. That it's saying we're yes, gonna support you. and collaborate. Yes, and I don't you. know enough to say I, as a member of this board, I think that Taylor Park should be a historic district. And I think the Short Hill Station should be a historic district. I just, I'm just being honest. Oh, me so, as it, a member so maybe that's the difference well, that in, the the poss in the possible awesome. creation or a well, potential. Okay. But that, that was the- uh, Yes, the it says in the proposed creation. Proposed you said, you said assist you in said public assist. engagement. Assist in public engagement as requested by HPC during the proposed creation of a historic. Well, I think collaborate's a better word, though, but I like the proposed. Do it's we so need, easy. why do, why do we need this? Like, it, it, just seems, it just seems to convey that we're supporting it, and I don't feel like our board has made a policy decision that the SID board, I just don't feel like we have the data and the information, I, I know I don't, to say, we again, do. I'm all for helping communicate and engage businesses in, in, in things being considered by HPC and to help represent the business. As, I mean, I'm all for that. That is totally our role. But I don't think we know enough to know. We don't know for certain things what the business's point of view is on things or which things are beneficial or not. Well, yeah, so business just from a procedural so, perspective, yeah. right? I was asked to draft a resolution. You can do whatever you want, right? And so if you feel like this existing language is, is too committal or you want to remove a portion, you can do that. That's the whole point of, of tonight's discussion. What, so what in our past, though, Steve, mm -hmm. we've, we've engaged with a lot of township organizations without a resolution, right? Mm -hmm. CETA, we, we have a lot of, and we can, you work and talk with a lot of the art company, you know, and we've never done a resolution like this to sort of authorize you talking with, like, to me, it's a little odd because you should, you like, you should be reaching out and we should be communicating with all of these groups. And if, if HPC and our business, it, it feels like I'm, I'm wondering why we need a resolution. Like, like to me, this would be a first time that we need a resolution to talk to another township organization. I, I, to me, that's a bit odd. Well, so what, what's the, like, and, and, and so I, I think part of the challenge with HPC, right, is it's not, it's not CETA, right? CETA does great things, but it's not a de facto land use board, right? And so we need to be very careful if we are asked by the township committee to engage with HPC, that we have certain garbage. Um, there are two pending applications, right? Uh, or they, there will be, at least on the Tuesday night agenda, as I'm told. Um, one of them is for the, the Short Hills Station District, which is within our city. If you remember back to late 23, there was the proposal to designate the entire downtown. And it created a, a furor in, in town because there was very little public engagement, if any, and very little public notice. And it ended up being tabled and is now sat and, and probably will never advance. The feedback that I received from HPC and from the township committee members was this could have been done a lot better had the SID been engaged because we could have met with people and explained to them what HPC is doing, not necessarily advocate for HPC, but at least get our constituents, right, to understand what this entity is trying to do, the HPC. That didn't happen. This, I think, is now a lesson learned to say we should be doing that, right, and we should be assisting HPC. However, I think in the security of our own organization, we need to make sure that we're setting boundaries. And so when you say, you know, we really want to be careful about Taylor Park. And maybe we don't want to specifically endorse that project. We don't want to specifically mention that we're going to get involved with Short Hills Village. I think there needs to be something that says that we're going to engage with the land use board on a regular basis. But I'm not sure, it really, it's, it's up to you guys how you want to formalize that, if at all. 
But so hopefully, I know that was a secure, circuitous answer, but to, I mean, can we also have that thing. we had a discussion in our meeting about this and that we codify in our minutes <laughs> that we've discussed that okay. that we may that HPC has approached us and would like us to be more active in helping with communications to businesses. And, and as a neutral facilitator of those communications, we I'm not sure we should be taking a strong one position or another on whether it's a good idea. I, I and I, I I'm a little uncomfortable because I, I know that there was a political backdrop but, to this but, issue. Right. And I but you're saying that this is on the on the agenda for Tuesday? No. To to codify no. Short Hills Village no, as no, no, no. I, I believe there's gonna be either a presentation or discussion. I don't know. And they want to say that supporting I shouldn't have said Tuesday no. and, imminently. Okay. Yeah. So, I um, think we just end up like I have no idea that like I do we even know I don't know we're kind of going in circles but I don't know that we I I, I would have no idea if the property owners and business owners at Short Hill Station would want it or not want it. To that's be the a, point is no one's talking to right them. so I should <laughs> definitely right. want to don't, be well yeah. shouldn't we have on the line? Can I ask a couple but, quick, quick questions yeah. and I, I don't mean to interrupt you can no, certainly please. tell me okay oh, God, so I, I'd be happy yes. to um is is a, a resolution needed uh put it in the near term, or is this something that could be um, uh, represented at the next meeting? I think a resolution could be represented. Um, I think we should just get something in the minutes that establishes that we've had this conversation and we are working towards a potential resolution. The, the other thing I was gonna suggest, um, having listened to all of your comments, um, and you tell me whether this, I think, gets to the heart is, I think the language in the second whereas clause perhaps more accurately reflects what I'm hearing for your comments, which is you would engage in a cooperative effort with HPC to explore these enumerated issues in the next whereas clause. So rather than commit to the creation, what I'm hearing and what I would propose is a revised language that says something to the effect that uh, Explorer will uh, engage with HPC in a cooperative effort to determine uh, whether to create a historic designation for Taylor Park. Uh, engage with HPC in a cooperative effort uh, to determine whether uh, to create a historic district for the Short Hills Mall Village. Now, perhaps not that precise language, but I, I guess what I'm asking is if that it more accurately reflects can the it sentiment be even that I'm more, I, I feel like I'm like pushing back a bit here. Could it be even more general though? Again, like why is the SID getting involved in our view? I mean, Taylor Park is a great part of town that brings people down, but like, could it be even more general about our role of, of well, being engaged in discussion, engaging businesses and helping with communication and getting input and feedback, in you know, especially related to the economic well, well, yeah. So that's what general. delete. Well, you delete all these the list of five things, and you kind of the way the generic uh, engagement to discuss, you know, with respect to advance the economic and historic future of the town, and leave it at that, and and opens the door of communication without dictating sort of the 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 agenda, right? Uh, in a resolution, I, I don't know if that would accomplish. Does, does this help with the Main Street application? It, it's uh, it certainly would help um, to say that we have a partnership with HPC. So let's. Uh, it so is not. I thought it was submitted, and I thought we said that it kind of is. We, we've already submitted our application, and this really will not impact the decision. Are we going to supplement our application yeah. to demonstrate if, if this? If this were to come in, I yeah. see. Okay. Um, okay. Plus, I, I do have to supplement anyway because the Chamber of Commerce letter came in after we submitted. Okay. Um, yeah, their I board meeting. Yeah. yeah. So I, I have to send something anyway as a supplement. Um, so, so, now, th does does having this resolution hurt us? No. Does it help us somewhat? Is it a deal breaker? No. Um, and so I certainly would not suggest that we do anything that we're not comfortable with. Is you know to try to bolster the Main Street application. The Main Street application will stand on its own. Um, so we need to just make sure that we are protecting our organization going forward um, with whatever comes out of this discussion. Does that clarify, Ben? But 
my other question is, why are we just isolating Taylor Park and the Short Hills Village? Shouldn't can, can't we just say all the districts within this within the SID or some more generic, more something a little more? Th those are the two uh, proposed designations that HPC is is attempting to advance at present. We could eliminate those and just be generic about it. Um, that's fine. I mean, we can, I'd we like can, the idea of some kind of language that says, right, we're going to assist these things that talk about the joint and vast the economic and historic feature of the town and collaborating and helping with communication and in, in especially with the business community. Like, that all makes sense. I think it just seems tricky focusing on these two items. Would, would and you, just as a side note, Short Hill Station actually has nothing to do with the Main Street applications. And stuff. Correct. It's only for that. As a side note. Um, but, would you feel more right? comfortable if we were to eliminate the five specific actions, and as Mr. Cooper said, simply leave the first two whereases, um, is, that, I would is that generic feel enough? I would feel more comfortable. I, what about, if I could again suggest, what if you just strike the first two numbered paragraphs? Um, uh, is, not, is what you were seeing to accomplish not captured within items three, four, and five? I, I think three, four, and five um, certainly are what, you know, our obligation to our stakeholders needs to be. I think had three, four, and five occurred in late 2023, um, there would have been a much more robust discussion of the downtown designation. So if the, if the, the goal is to solve a problem that exists, three, four, and five would be the way to do it. I would feel much, I would feel more comfortable. Well, the other thing is, one, one, you're looking at something that the municipality owns, and one, you're looking at a private. Um, no, Short, Short Hills Village has uh, both, because we own uh, right. the parking lots, we own the train station, the federal government owns the post office, uh, right. we own the Arboretum, um, so, and then there's private property as well. Are you comfortable if one and two were not sure. included? Is anyone not comfortable if one and two were out? May I make a proposal or a suggestion? I think that Taylor Park is important for our... I mean, it says in number three, that maybe you take out the word future to examine designation proposals, and that includes mm -hmm. I mean, the ones that are coming up. I don't think we need the word future, so that we would be... If you want to mention Taylor Park, like currently including, or, or such as. Or such as. Including, but not limited to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Language, Language of lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can, I ask, can I ask a format question on, on this document? I've always thought whereas clauses are sort of the non-enforceable, set the context, what are we doing? And the whole purpose of this resolution is to authorize Steve to talk to HPC. And I'm, I'm wondering whether it, it should just be, whereas we're trying to promote business, they're trying to do something we would like to communicate to effectuate our joint goals, therefore, and have something more, I, 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 I don't know, it, it sort of- Yes and both. Oh, okay. okay. I know precisely what you're you, asking. You know what I'm yes. getting at? Okay. I do. So, which is that the enumerated paragraphs would, would in, in many resolutions, many, not all, would be under the therefore clause. Yes. But uh, there is, but that, so that would be a proper way. I can't say that this is not a proper way also. Okay. okay. Well, it sounds like, um, so. yeah. it sounds like if we're going to pass it, it would be beneficial to do that, that we might as well do it so that it can be submitted. Am I to the, with the Main Street application, yes. which is something we're comfortable with. And so if Brian is saying that the language is okay, and we're saying if we take out one and two, it sounds like we're getting closer to a solution. Okay, so then <laughs> what, what we are left with is a second whereas. Well, let's fix the first paragraph. So we have yes. Explore has submitted its application and one of the key, right? That's just factually more correct. Um, okay. And then, whereas Explore is engaged in discussions. That's okay, right? We You've spoken to HPC. The second whereas seems mm -hmm. okay, right? Mm -hmm. to, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then... If, if you like, you can now, therefore... Yeah, that's, be what, it that's where I was going. Yep. Therefore, resolved, or be it resolved. And then... <clears throat> um, 
kind of three, four, five, support. kind of that. Do we want that sentence? Explore will provide support to HPC on an ongoing basis, or just just three, four, and five? Well, therefore, be resolved that Explore will, you know, what reasonably work with HPC to examine existing and potential future designations if we want to name the yeah. park, you know, if that's important. Yeah, and I was just so uh, <coughs> that Explore will. And then you have three enumerated paragraphs, yeah. mm -hmm. except it sits three, four, and five become one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. Work with HPC to examine future designate to examine designation proposals, including but not limited to uh, proposals for uh, Taylor Park and Short Hills Village. Right, right. And reason, well, like I guess I'd say in or reason. adjacent to this. I mean, Taylor Park is not <laughs> you in sit. I, I think Tracy. It's not a contract. I think Tracy is a good point. I think yeah. if we just say in or adjacent to the sit would be a catch all. Right. Frank. Yeah. Right. We're not going to get involved in, you know, things that are happening in residential neighborhoods, you know, miles from, but if it's within proximity, right? Because that's, that's good. Yeah. It keeps a business focus. So, so I'm sorry, could you repeat that language? So, so work with HPC to examine designation proposals in and around. Right or mm -hmm. in, in adjacent, or in and adjacent to the sit to ensure that I call it the sit district to ensure that both historic preservation and economic mm -hmm. development goals are met. So, mm -hmm. can can I ask though, what if those goals um, are not are, are not aligned? Are not aligned. Well, we, we we relinquish power, or we 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 relinquish our ability to do things at certain points right so hpc can't authorize a preservation district they can only refer it to the township committee right we could if we feel that their proposal does not comport with economic development goals to say that and say this is not something that that we support well you're required to that's what collaborate is so i, I would i would agree though with the executive director and i, I do want to emphasize this because um i think you're making a lot of great progress um here but I do want to emphasize a couple things. This is not a contract. So, you know, it's a resolution. It's a statement of policy. Um, and as we know, uh, in a million contexts, policies can, you know, policies can change. The same exact policy statement can be interpreted a lot of different ways, depending on the policymaker uh, or, or agency at the time. So I, I and that's valuable. OK, so I, I, I don't I think you were right to be proceeding very carefully and deliberately. But I also don't want I want you to know that you. You are not being, not a single word that I have heard um, is binding you to any conclusion or obligating you to, you know, continue on a process when you feel that that process is no longer fruitful or in the best interest of your constituents. Um, so uh, with that said, I just I, I don't want you to get bogged, bogged down um, with some, some particulars if, if you don't need to. And if anything, I believe it's giving giving more say to the to the sit, which is you know it's giving more autonomy and more deference to the sit to make yeah. decisions for the small businesses in town that have not had a say. I, I mean, I, I, I'm a little dumbfounded that this board was this was founded to represent their interest yet. We don't want to represent their interest. This is what this board is for. They need to be heard. And yeah, I mean, as things stand today, right? We don't have any real ability to comment on the HPC process or engagement. Um, I think if we're going to be honest about transparency and engagement, this is a good step. The, the Historic Preservation Commission should be working with the Improvement District. In any town, not not just Milburn. To, and, to, so. yeah, as, and sitting on the on the on the dais as a TC member, when I ask the question, well, what does the sit think of it? I haven't thought about it. Yeah, nobody told us. to say, you know. Yeah. Sure. Sure. You know, yeah, I want to say I completely agree. We should be representing the businesses and having views. I say my concern was conveying a view on two districts without having the information. I completely agree. We're here to represent the businesses. But I don't think yeah. this is asking you to make that. Well, when taking out the first two, I think the, yeah. the way it was worded before yeah. sounded like we were saying so, we support these. Uh, two things. Can I ask a number four? Now it sounds more open. 
um, we're, we're going to clarify outreach to property owners to help create under, like, we're not talking about like homeowners, we're talking about business, well, commercial we property. Is, we could just say SID stakeholders, because that then encompasses mm -hmm. that's good. assessed yes, properties, non-assessed yeah. properties, right. owners, the owners, uh, owners, operators, as yeah. well as, as uh, businesses. I, I like, I like yeah. that. That's good. Um, and we could do the same in, in now three to yeah. engage SID stakeholders. Okay. And another question to but effectuate. It's, it, but it's, it, it, it's SID stakeholders and it could be um, surrounding areas, right? Sometimes. Yes, no? Well, I don't know if they drill down. Kind of broad. SID stakeholders. Okay. Yeah. But, um, does without over bureaucratizing anything, how do we actually? For forty five minutes into the chapter, we well, because we want what to get a lawyer. Paid by six minutes. I get paid by the minute. We get paid by, no. without beating um, this to death, even though we beat it to death. Yes. No, no. But to effectuate this, though, yeah. I mean, does it require a, a, a either going through the advisory board or a com new committee set up to actually engage, or is this just you talking to? HPC and reporting back. Kind so, of or do we need? So, okay. we do have a, a business advocacy subcommittee of the board. Um, yeah. Typically, it doesn't really meet unless there's some issue like this. That would be a good time for that committee to meet. Um, I think my procedural question is the resolution that's now being entertained is far different than what was presented. Um, what is your opinion on, as, uh, on how sure. we could proceed? So you, you have two options, um, and uh, either is totally fine. So we can take these edits back to the drawing board and, and come back with uh, a new written um, resolution for the next meeting. Uh, drafts can be circulated in between that, so there's further opportunity for people to weigh in. Or the alternative, we can now it is required to read the resolution into the record. <laughs> so um, the alternative is once we have settled on language, uh, someone, um, and I'd recommend either or myself or Steve, read the, res read the proposed resolution. Then a motion would be made to adopt that resolution, seconded and voted on accordingly. Would you like me to read the resolution just so everyone can hear where we are based on my notes? Maybe it's a good time for a reset. Is that all right with everyone? Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll start with the title, Resolution 24.001. Uh, resolution formalizing collaboration between Explore Milburn Short Hills and the Milburn Historic Preservation Commission. Whereas Explore Milburn Short Hills, Explore, has submitted the township's 2024 Main Street, New Jersey application. And one of the key components of the Main Street approach is historic preservation-based development strategies. And whereas, Explore has engaged in discussions with the chair of the Milburn Historic Preservation Commission to engage in a cooperative effort to advance the economic and historic future of the town. Therefore, be it resolved, Explore will, one, work with HPC to examine designation proposals in and adjacent to the SID district to ensure that both historic preservation and economic development goals are met. Two, work with HPC to advance educational outreach to SID stakeholders to help create better understanding of historic preservation policies and benefits. And three, work with HPC to engage SID stakeholders who may be interested in historic design standards, preservation, and programmatic services related to their properties. And then it would be uh, the Explore Board authorizes the executive director to engage with the HPC as needed to effectuate these efforts. Um, I hereby certify that this resolution is duly adopted by the Milburn Short Hills Business Organization, Inc. Board of Trustees at a meeting uh, of said board on March 14, 2024. <clears throat> Sounds like two resolutions, right? One, one is what you read and, and then the authorization to the executive director. When, when those, so that's, that's one resolution. Be, that's all one. That's all one resolution. Okay. Yeah, be, okay. There will be a further result and then, that the Explore Board authorizes the executive director to engage with the APC as needed to effectuate. Got it. Needs. Okay. We can still have discussion. Uh, I, I would think that no one made a motion. I just read something. Based on based on that reading, though, the language you had submitted before, including but not limited to Taylor Park and the Short Hills Village. Uh, would would be included as well. Uh, it's up to you guys. I, I thought I heard that we wanted to remove that, but maybe I misheard. You tell me what to write. 
mean, I'm okay either way because it's sort of uh, optional. If, if it's helpful to include reference to those current pending kind of discussions and it's in, in that would be in scope, I think, regardless of whether it's in writing or not. So do you feel it's helpful? If, if it's helpful, like that? let's, yeah, let's I do feel it. Like if, if there's a feeling it's helpful, then let's put it in. Okay. Yeah, and I would keep the okay. Taylor Park in downtown Milburn no, no, no Park. Just thank you to keep that. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Ryan, do I just, can just, I just read that just one? Read paragraph one? Okay. Mm -hmm. Work with HPC to examine designation proposals in and adjacent to the Sid District, including but not limited to Taylor Park in downtown Milburn and Short Hills Village to ensure that both historic preservation and economic development goals are met. Okay. Do you need to include like which include Short Hills Station and like the more wording? Like, do we all know what Short Hills Village is or do we, I don't know. If you're Remember, running. Short Hills Village, as presented by the HPC, is yeah. larger than the Short Hills Station District of the city. It includes, oh, um, technically, right, the parking lots are not within the SID. Right. Um, the post office is a non-assessed, it's an exempt property, it's owned by the federal government. And the Arboretum, which they're proposing, has never been within the district boundary. So... I think it might be less confusing just to say Short Hills Village. Okay. So if that was acceptable, a board member could make a motion to approve the resolution as read <laughs> by uh, the executive director. How would you like to be the secretary tonight? That's a, <laughs> there's a lot of notes. <laughs> I mean, is there, do we have anybody online? I don't know if, if anyone joined. Oh, I don't think so. Okay. Or so, did Ashley join? Ashley. No, okay. so is it explicit that the Short Hills, what the Short Hills Village entails? Do we know? It is, um, I would not feel comfortable speaking about that. It is, I know some, but I don't know what the eventual proposal will look like. Right. I guess none of us do other than HPC. So I, I would not want to comment on that. And, and I want to be clear, this is as, as read, you are not taking a position on the proposal. What you are agreeing to do is work with HBC to examine the proposal and determine whether it com it, can it comports with your your view of historic preservation and economic development. Your view of economic development and historic preservation can diverge from the HBCs, and you are not committing to to to, to find common ground with them. You are you are you are committing only to work with them to examine those questions in their proposal and you will you will reach your own opinions. So would we be better in the language saying the the area surrounding the Short Hills train station or you're okay with Short Hills? But I, I don't know. I, I I would again just from picking up yeah. on the conversation, yeah. I would stick with the um the names of the current designations that are being used. So, so you're not, again, you're not approving the contents of those designations, but right now what I'm gathering is that HPC has been talking about two specific designations that are uh, being identified it's as Short, Short Hills Village or Taylor Park in downtown Millburn. Yeah, I think we're probably safer just to use Short Hills Village. That will be the the name of the eventual designation, right? So it's not going to be coterminous with um, the the SID district. It will be slightly different. So is anyone wanting to make a motion for this? I'm happy to. Or okay. the, go for it. Okay, uh, motion to uh, to pass uh, as as read by uh, Steve, our executive director. Second. Do you want to, you want to re read it one more time just to make sure? I absolutely can. Yeah, I think I think it's important. I'll, I'll skip the title. Um, <laughs> save us ten seconds. Whereas Explore Milburn Short Hills Explore has submitted the township's 2024 Main Street, New Jersey application, and one of the key components of the Main Street approach is historic preservation-based development strategies. And whereas. Explore has engaged in discussions with the chair of the Milburn Historic Preservation Commission, HPC, to engage in a cooperative effort to advance the economic and historic future of the town. Therefore, be it resolved, Explore will, one, 
Fingers crossed I get this right. Work with the HPC to examine designation proposals in and adjacent to the SID district, including but not limited to Taylor Park in downtown and Short Hills Village to ensure that both historic preservation and economic development goals are met. Two, work with HPC to advance educational outreach to SID stakeholders to help create better understanding of historic preservation policies and benefits. Three, work with HPC to engage SID stakeholders who may be interested in historic design standards, preservation and programmatic services related to their properties. Therefore, be it further resolved, the Explore Board authorizes the executive director to engage with the HPC as needed to effectuate these efforts, et cetera, et cetera. You can stop there because the, the, yes, the rest of the language change. is only for when you write this down and someone certifies that it's accurate. It's not part of the resolution. So I move that's adopted. <laughs> that motion as read is adopted. Second. Someone needs a second. I second it. Okay. I'll do the roll call. Alexa Clark. Yes. Tracy Katzlevy. Yes. Jackie Benjamin Lieberberg. Yes. Ben Stoller. Okay. As a TC member, I have. I, you can't. I abstain. You have to. I have to abstain. No, you, 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 I, I, you don't have to, but you can. I abstain as a TC member. Okay. Um, Ashley is absent. Stephen Weiner. Yes. Four votes, so it does carry. That meets quorum. That's correct. You, you don't even need a, a. You don't need approval of a quorum. A quorum has voted. A majority of that quorum is in the affirmative. Motion passes four to zero. One. All right. You want to keep pressing on? Can you read it back? No. <laughs> <laughs> Funny guy. I tried like we should have applauded it. <laughs> you know, they have that, that clerk in the Senate who gets to read all the, the names on a vote. That should be my next job. Um, so this is going to be a very quick presentation on Placer AI. Um, so if you remember at our last meeting, we talked about an upcoming meeting with the folks from Placer AI, which is a, a location analytics platform. Um, they use cell phone location data to assist communities and SIDS with a variety of projects. And so um, don't worry, I'll, I'll give you these notes, Tracy. So, you get all the um, so they currently have about a thousand clients nationwide, um, including actually the bids in Newark, Somerville, Westfield, Summit, and Madison, which has an economic development office, not a SID. Um, we had an initial meeting with some of the board members, I think Jackie and Tracy were on the call, if I recall, um, and their sales representative on February 22nd. And then we actually recorded a demo, which I shared with all of you um, on March 1st. It was a 30 minute demonstration. Um, so hopefully you've had a lot of chance to watch that. And um, there's a lot of significant benefits to this program as well as other similar ones, but there are two major issues that, that jump out. And so uh, the first is, uh, do we need such a significant database for a SID of our size? Um, I think Stephen kind of pointed out where we're sort of probably use 10 or 20% of the entire capacity, but you have to pay full price. Um, so maybe it's not useful just for our improvement district. Um, secondly, the subscription is $16,000 a year. Um, that is a significant portion of our budget. Um, so I think uh, where, where I'd like to move this is um, I don't think this is particularly applicable to explore, but I do think there's benefit to the town as a whole. Um, we can get really good data on, for instance, you know, for Ben, how many people are using different fields at different times. Um, you can get data analytics on um, who's going into the parking deck and how frequently it's used. Um, this is all location-based cell phone data. So um, I think we're too small. Maybe the municipality is the right client. Um, and so, my recommendation, Ben, is I'm happy to have a conversation with you on it. We did our homework. It's not for us. Maybe it's for, this, for the town as a whole. Um, and I'm comfortable just kind of leaving it where it is at this point and, uh, and passing it along to the, the township committee. Maybe interested, maybe not, but that's where I, I stand, at least uh, from my perspective. Okay. Uh, so we'll, we'll speak offline about that, Ben. Main Street closure. Next item. So um, this is all open discussion. So there's no resolution on the table. Just we, we do need to reach a conclusion, but I'll, I'll get to that. So every spring, um, Explore initiates the discussion of, of whether we're going to close Main Street or not um, and create a temporary pedestrian mall for July and August. So 
Um, just from a technical side of it, in order to close a street for more than 48 hours, you need an ordinance from the township committee and then approval from the state DOT. Um, so Explore's role is to pro program the space with events, music, signage, the chalk, the games, everything that you see. We do not have a formal role in the ordinance that closes the street or anything related to that. That is solely within the dominion of the township committee. So tonight, really our responsibility is, as we've done in the past, discuss the potential dates that can be employed um, and speak to Ben as to what he feels comfortable he can support um, at the TC level because it will require um, an ordinance be passed, um, hopefully sooner rather than later, so we can get our logistics together. But um, so that's that's just me kind of setting the table. We don't have a formal role other than requesting that Ben, as our liaison, go back to the township committee with whatever he believes um, will be approved. So that's my that's my setup. So who would like to speak regarding the street closure? And I've, I've got some thoughts myself. I have a statement from Richard Wasserman that he'd like me to read for the record. But Do you want to share first? And then sure. Yours right. and Richard, and then okay. Uh, Richard Wasserman. Unfortunately, I'm not able to make it here this evening. I'd appreciate it if you read this short statement into the record for me. As one of the original sponsors of the Main Street closure, I did want to urge our board and the township committee to continue the main street closure for the full July and August months, July 3rd through September 3rd, according to this 2024 calendar. During the past three summers, we've seen what a great venue the main street closure has become for our township. Our residents and visitors now see our closed main street as the center for food, engagement, and of course, music during the summer. It offers our residents a reason to stay local, shop local, and of course, eat local. I've been amazed at all of the people from our surrounding towns who come to our township to enjoy it. And while those neighbors start at the closure, they stay in the township and visit many of our shops and restaurants throughout the township. Indeed, we need more open space and music and food for our residents to enjoy their downtown. Email you know, this. That would be great. Yeah. So here it is for okay. the copy for now. Um, and if I can have a copy for Sure. I'll email it to you. Great. Um, okay. So this is something that I feel pretty passionate about. I'm happy to talk, or if somebody wants to go first, but I'm going to, I've also prepared a statement. So fire away. Fire away. Okay. Um, every year, this board has a discussion regarding, regarding the viability and timetable of the Main Street Pedestrian Mall closure. For the last summer season, each year we look at the concerns as well as the positive impact that the signature feature of Explore and how, happy, how popular and welcoming it is for our businesses, Main Street, uh, Milburn Short Hills residents and customers, visitors from around the region. As noted in our user survey from August, 2023, which Mr. Grillo provided at the board meeting last, last month, the Main Street Pedestrian Mall was closed to vehicular traffic from Friday, June 23rd and reopened on Tuesday, September 5th, a total of 74 days, including 11 weekends. The mall hosted 30 live music performances 15 open street programs, which included fitness, yoga, a children's chalk event, all by local businesses. There was also a painting uh, event as well that I just remembered. When asked in the survey also provided some information, when asked to provide three words that describe them all, the most popular responses were lively, community, fun, music, relaxing, and friendly. When asked about their favorite features, the majority of the people said live music, dining, pedestrian space, no cars, public seating, which were all enhancements in 2023. 70% reported that they use the mall either daily, weekly, or multiple times a month. 
most visits on weekend evenings or weekday evenings and reported that they spend an average $88 per visit. 70% reported that they visit other businesses in town when they're visiting the space. 30% of the respondents from the surrounding communities were from Maplewood, Summit, and Springfield. It's a great sign that a third of our users are choosing to spend money in our city. As Steve mentioned, this Placer AI data performed a comparative data and analysis on the mall between July 1st and August 31st in 2021 versus 2023. According to the data, the number of visits with a minimum of seven minutes or more increased by 18,000 people from 61,000 in 2021 to 79,100 in 2023. The number of, of visitors also increased by over 10,000 people from 41,221 to 51,800 in 2023. In 2023, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays saw higher visitation than those days in 2021. This demonstrates that users in the space are using the space throughout the entire week. They spend an average of 95 minutes in the mall. Looking forward for 2024, I encourage or I believe that the short that the township committee should consider a full closure from July 3rd through September 3rd, which is 60 days. And I believe this for a number of reasons. By having the complete closure, this will mitigate the strain caused for businesses to set up and break down equipment on a daily basis. It will it will also remove the cost and time required by Department of Public Works to open and close the streets on the on on several of the on the Mondays to Wednesdays to lessen the logistical burden for Explore to set up games and seating and allow the Explore staff to focus on other priorities and other programming. This will also allow more open streets programming, yoga, chalk art, fitness and the early part of the week when programming does not include the music and can be more experiential in nature. To promote the downtown economic development by attracting residents and shoppers on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays supports the restaurants, the stores, and, and, and enhances the experience when the lowest foot traffic of the summer during those days. Questions, comments? That, that last point is really important because the summer we see a huge drop off, right? Kids are going to camp and everyone leaves. So this bringing them back into town really is, we see a difference. Yeah, and that's, you know, yeah, that's, it, it's a magnet to really. Uh, and I'd like a copy of that as well. Yes, I'll leave um, that. One thing that strikes me a little odd about that is uh, that data you gave, is that affected for COVID? Because I would think during 2021 in the height of COVID, people were going out. I would think there would have been a much larger skew in those numbers between 23 and 21. I mean, I wasn't going out in 21. I was hunkered down at home with the kids in the house and in the, in the circle of safety uh, and not going out. So that was really more 20. 20. Well, Mark, we all know we're on March 13, 2020. Fine. I shut down my business and I didn't go back. We didn't open back up until 2022. So 2021, summer 2021 was a height of COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And just the numbers you gave, 61,000 to 71,000 and 41,000 to 51,000. I, I would have thought that spread would have been much, much different. So I would just check those numbers because. Well, this is the placer AI data, so that's. Well, what it's I mean. I, I, it's so more, those were people who were outside in that area. Those were the those people lines, that were so. that were visited that were in the closure. They, they track your cell phone. And that's, that that's summer great. we had closure just on the weekend. But no, um, I'm. I mean, I'm just. No, in 2020, what did you guys think? Twenty would be much. Twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. 
was my first year here. And we, we oh, were doing weekend closures we doing starting weekend around closures. Mother's Day. Okay. And then we were, I think we, we did full closure uh, starting at the end of June. My, oh, we had full closure. Yeah, we had a full closure time. for the summer. Okay. It was just a, a longer period of okay. those temporary closures because that went to, I think it was Mother's oh, Day, like May 15th, okay. something like that. But the, but the other thing that- Well, I, I, I want to say it. I think yeah. as, as the guy that was programming the space, right. right? I can tell you, I think people in 2021 were using it for their outdoor activity because they couldn't go to indoor activity. So I'm actually not surprised that the spread is not larger. It was an outdoor activity in the middle of the pandemic. Like park usage went up, field usage went up, golf course usage went up. So I'm not surprised that it's not a much larger skew. I think people were using it because they couldn't go to other indoor activities. But it was one when you started, this board was meeting inside. Yes. When, when Steve was hired, the month Steve was hired was about the month I Yeah, but we had the, we had the, the uh, partition. Uh, plexiglass partition. But, so. but no, the, no, I'm, just, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just, I guess, to, it is hard, I think, we, with all our recollections of the, of the pandemic blur together. And I, I myself have caught wondering, was I really doing that at that <laughs> point in time? But in, in 2021, while still in the midst of the pandemic, uh, the vaccine, the very first vaccinations were, I think, in uh, February, March of 2021. This, there was not a return to normalcy, but a lot of indoor activities and a lot of other activities were trending back towards normal. We had a full music program in summer 2021 yeah. in the pedestrian mall. So we were, you know, it was, it was kind of times as normal because it was outdoors. It was one place where you could have a public congregation. I, yeah, I just because you know, I just want to make sure I have all the data, all the numbers, and it such. Would, it would probably, and, I'll, I'll be interesting yeah. to see. Mm -hmm. I, I also think that it, yes. it, as as we've evolved it and matter. have it become more of a yeah, exactly. of a destination, mm -hmm. that I would expect the the twenty twenty four numbers to be even greater because now. People are aware that we, hey, let's go to Melbourne. We've got, they've got live music and it's free on weekends. And we don't even have to sit in the restaurant. We can sit at the picnic table and grab a pizza and sit there and, uh, or an ice cream cone and it doesn't cost us anything. So um, I, I think the, I think the popularity, I think it, it, it has a momentum of, of its own and that it's only going to get bigger and, and better. Yeah, and just for the record, too, I'm a huge proponent of the outdoor space. I just have to be able to justify it and sell it to the township committee and get the three consensus that we need yeah. to do it. So, uh, so I think you know I'm a big economic guy and want the activity, and I believe in everything you said. But we got to push that forward and be able to get the the votes um, and the things that are going to really help push the TC because we've had discussions. We've, we've, you know, I know I've had discussions with Frank about it is a report from fire, a report from police, a report from you know, FDPD, um, the, the volunteer, uh, you know, Milburn Shore Hills volunteer association and um, the hospital. I mean, we had people in TC meetings last year stand up and say, you know, people almost died because they couldn't get through uh, to the hospital because of that closure. So we need to understand whether that is, you know, the severity of that situation. Did you get letters? Is that what you're saying? Or are you oh, going to no. ask? There was, there, was there, was there was almost a fist fight. No, there was almost, there was an altercation in this, in this yeah. very room. And Steve, that's something that Alex is coordinating the conversations with the, and, yeah. with the yeah, Alex, police um, department, fire department? Like what's the Yeah, Alex status is, is having ongoing conversations with so, those. So Ben, I would suggest um, to actually move forward with those discussions, speak to Alex and he can set up a meeting for right, right. the chiefs. Well, it's incumbent upon everyone in this room along with Alex to get those answers, right? It's our duty to the residents to make sure that no one dies of a heart attack while sitting in traffic if there's a closure uh, and we have to get those answers. Now, 
those, you know, those studies can be done and, you know, it's reaching out to those four parties that we discussed. Um, we also had a surgeon stand up in a TC meeting, a very prominent surgeon who lives in town and was very, very vocal about the speed in which his staff gets to the hospital, not on weekends, but on weekdays. So I've asked Alex to reach out to the hospital and get their feedback as well. So as much as I love it and such is we just have to do our homework, right? And the, the, the analytics and the, these discussions will re lead us to the right answer. And as I in you know, in the middle of August, when I could hit a golf ball through Milburn and probably not hit anybody, you know, Here's a different discussion as in June fifteenth, or you know, when schools end again. So you know, there are other things. Also, too, let's back to COVID. Is there was no traffic during COVID? No one's really driving around downtown Milburn in June and July during COVID. It wasn't the same traffic patterns as we're uh, experiencing probably now, and we just have to understand that as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. The, the Essex two-way potential, do you think that would improve any kind of, because I feel like it's mainly coming up Main Street and then you're stuck at that light, right? It, that's really where the issue might be, I, I would think. But well, if you can get to Essex. Yeah, you, the, the, I think right. the issue is that these cars back up on the one way and they can't get around. And if that is the two-way, that's a very good point is you can come up spring and-, and Right, maybe it will help. You know, when is that's, that going to affect? That's up to you, Ben. Uh, <laughs> no, I think there's a date, right? The, the SC Street two way. Yeah. Oh no, you guys have to approve it. Um, we're just giving you the final study um, okay, on, well, on we May can't 27th. Approve it without the final study, when is the final study going to be presented? So there's a public happen. presentation May 27th, eight o'clock here. Okay. March 27th. March 27th. Um, but to answer Stephen's question, one of the parts that we looked at with the Essex Street two way is. If it's a two-way street, could we potentially elongate the main street closure? Um, and the answer, realistically, is yes. You've just now created a new artery. Because remember, creating a two-way street on Essex isn't really for traffic on Essex. It's for traffic on Milburn, yeah. right? Because you now created a secondary artery to go eastward. Um, and, and so, and one thing, like just, you know, we've, we've looked at some traffic improvements. One thing that we're looking at doing this summer, if the street is closed, is instead of having one right turn lane, from uh, Old Short Hills onto Essex, it'd be two right turn lanes, so we would double capacity. So there's there's a lot in the mix, um, but you know it gets back to, from my perspective, from Alex's perspective, traffic PD, we have to have some certainty as to when this is going to happen and how it's going to happen. Right, but this is we're about solutions, right? And if you do have the two way traffic, who controls the lights? PD, FD. There PD. won't be two way traffic this summer. Oh, you have to reconfigure oh, the entire route. Oh, no, 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 that no, won't no, happen. No. But oh but, no, 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 no. It's but a major keep engineering. In mind that the police, the fire, and the first aid squad have that capacity to expedite or change a light. With they have, you're so, saying real time. They have that. Yes, they have that. Their vehicles have that capacity to change. But a but, light. but my point is is we need to reach out to them and ask them if you're trying to change that capacity and you're 24 cars deep on Milburn Avenue, changing that light's not going to do you any good trying to get down to Lackawanna to make the left. What Steve is saying is that this is two way and you can come up spring, cut on, cut on, uh, on uh, Essex and go up. It's a different story. But, but like they just said, it's a major project that's not going to be in place. Because right. what, what they usually do, we see it all every day in Manhattan, is they cut up, they come up the wrong way, they come up the uh, the other traffic direction and then they put their light right. with the sirens blaring. But I think either way, what we should do is give Ben a potential blueprint to bring back to the TC um, and give him some direction on what we think preferable dates would be, et cetera, so that we're giving him some talking points to then go to Alex and the Chiefs and say, if the closure were to happen on X, X, Y, Z date, how does that affect your operations? And then I, I think that's our role here as yeah. it always has been, is we don't close the street, we don't make the final determination, but we have to give Ben as our liaison to marching orders to go back yeah. to the other so, decision. So, 
You were thinking July 4th through Labor Day? Was yes, I'm, I'm saying the day before July 4th, which is July 3rd, it's 60 days, which is uh, 14 days less. Shorter. shorter. And cutting out the end of June. And right. cu cutting out the end of June when people are still around mm -hmm. and camp and all of, all of those things. So it comes out that it is... 60 days, it's, it's 60 days. That's what it is. So it's a Wednesday, I believe July 4th is a is a Thursday. So it's the yep. Wednesday prior to July 4th to set it up so it's ready for the holiday. And it's the day after Labor Day and school does not start until the 5th. Oh, school starts the day after Labor Day. No, it doesn't. Check the calendar. I, 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 I that's what the website, was the fifth, I believe, if you would be so kind to check the calendar, but I'm, I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, it's the Board of Education. Oh, and, and, just, oh, that's not engaged. Yeah. and just so you know, um, the ordinance that is passed every year is the same ordinance. It's actually just the date changes. Um, it empowers the business administrator to reopen the street at any time. Yes, if there's um, a, if there's, so if there's if a it's schedule not working change. And there's traffic issue, if there's a, let's say a gas main blows on Melbourne Avenue and you need it, you can so there is that nice um, safety valve. Safety valve. Yeah. Exactly. I know we that Steve presented at a prior meeting. Yeah, I want to make sure that we have then have the survey results because just as it was said yes. earlier, in terms of data on people coming to town and the money, the spending of money, that it certainly benefits not just the businesses in the closure, but also businesses throughout town. And yeah, just I just two things I wanted to mention, I guess, reiterating what some people said. I think the open streets um, part of the program was a big enhancement, which also enables businesses from other districts and even community organizations like the chess folks, right, were there a lot to utilize the space. So it's not only benefiting the businesses there. And just, I say, it's, it's really our flagship program. A lot of the bands include local people. We received an award for... What was our award for? We won the a downtown place. New Jersey Best in Placemaking. Best in Placemaking. So, I mean, we were recognized in the state for the caliber of this. And it's just such a great sense of community. We've talked about the change in demographics. Like, I know being there, it's just such a great vibe of seeing people at all different ages and stages and all the different segments of the population. So, I'm hopeful. I, of course, safety is key. And absolutely, those discussions are critical to happen. But I'm hopeful... And, and I guess I would just wonder in those discussions, I'm sure Alice would cover this, like if there are concerns, are there any, you know, during those quieter months, are there any adjustments that could be made such as not having parking in a certain area? If this, you know, the two way is not gonna happen yet, but should there not be parking in a certain area when Main Street is closed so that on Essex Street or Melbourne mm -hmm. Avenue, there's like an additional lane. Yeah, so, so we I would actually, imagine that if, if you remember, those other things would be Discuss. One of our many parking yeah. achievements has been uh, there is a shoot lane now on Main Street heading towards uh, or heading northbound. It's only during morning and afternoon rush, but you know where M&T Bank is across from Vinny's Pizza? Yes. There's, I don't know, say six parking spaces. We've, um, we've eliminated parking at rush hour there mm -hmm. to create a de facto right turn lane. That could be made permanent during the closure period. So then you'd have two lanes uh, that could turn. Now, obviously that then brings into a question, can two cars safely turn onto uh, Milburn Avenue? Because you do have cars backing out of the now um, horizontal park or whatever. Uh, by the deli. By the deli. That's all stuff that the engineering department can look at. Again, it's about giving Ben the marching orders to say, we have these ideas, let's put them to paper and figure out if they really work or not. Can't do that until Ben is empowered to bring this to the TC, right? And um, you know the numbers. The numbers you gave too is you know we need to be able to be pragmatic in our approach because um, you know it became somewhat contentious with uh, you know the fisticuffs that occurred in the TC meeting. Uh, and having you know the surgeon write a letter to the township committee, uh, and as we get those studies back, uh, but we, that was one isolated incident, and I'm not minimizing it or dismissing it. 
I, I, the surgeon I, is another. Sounds like a separate topic. You know, a surgeon was uh, that I had staff. About the staff. The surgeon was complaining about his staff, staff not being able to get to the hospital, which Correct. is separate from the person yes. who suffered a medical incident, Correct. and that person. Was well, it's all concerned. related. It's, it's it's all related. But mm -hmm. but the, the the point I'm going to is the one incident that happened. However, when a surgeon comes up and, and articulates that he's having a problem getting a staff in during the week, then maybe there's a hybrid that in the, in the early month where July, where it's not as busy, maybe we don't close it 24 seven, seven days, 24 hours, seven days a week. And we're able to, to meet, to, to be very pragmatic and have you know, some type of, because uh, I have to sell it to the, the township committee. And then in August, when I could hit a golf ball through downtown, I hit anybody and maybe close it. So it's just, how do we think about getting everyone on the same page and being able to not so much negotiate, but negotiate a, a, a comparable or a deal that works for everyone uh, and, and be able to get to a, get everyone on board to support. So you're saying possibly a hybrid where it wouldn't be closed continuously? Yeah, I'm just thinking out, I'm summer. just thinking out loud. And, yeah. I, and I understand the you know, others, there's, there's some yeah. expenses and such. I think it's, you know, obviously the expense to, to, to put it up, take it down. You were very eloquent in, in mentioning the DPW folks and putting up the, the chairs and such, but to point, you know, the, the businesses that are benefiting, uh, you know, certainly would not have a problem covering that expense. What was the expense to take it up and put it down? Uh, Alex quoted me, uh, Alex quoted me at about $900 per weekend. So that's one police officer and two public works employees for about two hours, one day, and then two hours. Yeah, day. I would think that the servers at <laughs> Standard and EVO and and uh, Umi would all get together and throw that in for a, for a closure for the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday or something. I know I would if I was one of them. But I'm just trying to think of how we could figure out a way to accommodate everyone and get to a position well, in this for thinking, the sake of the businesses. Yeah. It might be a little hard. I just want to say it's been the businesses, just to factor this in, you may know this better, but like, a lot of the businesses had like permanent awnings and seatings of like, I don't think that's something, I don't know that they could take those things up and down on the weekends. I don't know. You might know better. I say it just, the model might be, I, I can certainly tell you the continuous closure enables the full, the full package of everything. I, I think if, 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 you do a, different model. if you do a hybrid, yeah. the product in July mm -hmm. will be substandard to the product in August. Um, we can't set up the same games and things because we don't have the manpower to clean it up, move it, bring it back, all that. The same thing with the awnings, the, the tents, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, that's going to have to just be something that you all consider as you're hundred percent right, Tracy. There will be a difference between the July hybrid and the August. It's can you live with it? Um, you know, I'm, I'm not here to give my opinion. Yeah. I'm just here to tell you. No, what the facts good. on the ground are. So. Think through the options. I think we just want to all be uh, flexible. Would it be like the weekend, like Friday night, Saturday, Sunday? I think Ben's saying Thursday. I would push for Thursday. I would push for Thursday. I mean, and then this is a case that we have to make to the TC, and uh, and certainly after we get the results from uh, from the police, fire, the staff at the uh, at our our WJ. St. Barnabas, uh, Barnabas and the first aid squad, uh, as well as uh, as as well as residents. But I'm sure everyone will show up and, and voice their opinion as well. I'm just one of five. And 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 you know, even for the games and such, uh, you know, we could probably you know what the games the what. Chess and Connect Four and be a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, but yeah. can we put that to DPW over the four or five days or three or four days? Yeah, we would be probably a little bit more judicious. Throw it in my backyard. And then I would tell you in August we would really go full bore and we put out everything. Yeah. Right. Just, 
again, it's, it's going to be a fraction of what it is when the full closure. That doesn't mean it's not going to be a quality event, but it's just not going to be the same. So who would be benefiting for those 12 days if we, if, I mean, yeah, Monday through Wednesday. The Monday through Wednesday. Do you think it, it would be because a alleviation of traffic? Well, that, that's that's you know that's a question we have to ask is the tra well we all know July is a lot busier than traffic's a lot busier than August. Yeah, it's a lot busier in August. And something that we might want to think about is and Sebastian a compromise as well, right? So, um, so if you look at the calendar, right? Um, July fourth is a Thursday, as Jackie said. So it would be the weekend of the 6th, the weekend of the 13th, the weekend of the 20th. Perhaps if it were to go full closure July 25th, then you're only dealing with three temporary closures. And the 25th is, you know, you're getting into the, the deep depths of the summer at that point. I mean, so you could go full closure on the 25th as opposed to going to full closure a week later on the 1st. And then you'd still get one, two, three, four, five, six. You would get six weeks of full closure if you moved it up one week. So you'd get three hybrids, six full. Do, do we know when summer school summer school ends? No, I don't think it's a big. No, I don't think it's a big. Um... I mean, I can tell you, Ben. You know, from being out there, the first two weekends in June. It is tough to get down Old Short Hills Road. There's oh. no doubt. I think moving it back in two June weeks July. in June. June, June, because we closed it June 23rd. Yes, yeah, so this would be. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. saying. I think that's step yeah, one already. in alleviating yeah. a problem is moving it now but to it, July. Yeah, yeah I, I think that last year at the 23rd, there was a lot of traffic coming down Old Short Hills that weekend. It was tough. Um, I think a correction to that course correction would be to move it later in the year by two weeks. I, mean, I think that's a great starting well, point. Well, I think I think the twenty the twenty fifth I could probably get some people behind. But I think you know, is this to are we deciding tonight, or do we need to get the studies and understand that first? That's you. What we've typically done in the past is give the TC liaison the scenario that we think works best. Right. Yeah. Obviously, part of your feedback is a full closure is not something you can sell. After that, it's sort of on you and me and Alex to facilitate. So the board steps away at that point once they give a recommendation to group. Okay. So uh, so I mean you guys could say what, what do we want to tell Ben? Is it start July 3rd, three hybrid weekends and then a full closure on Thursday the 25th. I just yeah. want to verify. Can you just pull up the yeah, I have it up. The, the school calendar? Oh, oh, it looks enough. like summer school goes to the uh, August 9th. <laughs> so that, yeah. and my, rec my recommendation would be the July, July 3rd through September 3rd. I will defer to the rest of the board members. I mean, that makes sense to me if the police, if they all say yeah, it's really not thing. in reality a problem, that, that's the ideal. But if they do say, well, wait, there are problems, you know, this, you know, then then maybe I like the, the three with a compromise, the th yeah. three weeks in July. That's like the plan B. I, I think, think the best thing is we can just agree on a plan A and a plan B. Yeah. That at least gives me and Alex and Ben some clarity. Yeah, and, and the biggest, the bigger one to me is the same Barnabas. It's a the it's Barnabas house or yeah. WJ Barnabas. Is, um, you know. <laughs> To have a surgeon stand up in front of us, which he'll, he will be back in that TC room standing in front of us, yeah. and far be it for me to argue with the head of you know, with the surgeon. But there is a difference between the ambulance drivers, and I'd like to hear with our volunteers oh, don't worry, here, versus like staff of you know, like that's commuting. That's like these guys, you know, that to me is like, sure, we all have commuting challenges and you make adjustments, but. So if the ambulance so drivers are saying, yeah, you know, this was really, that's much more important to me. I mean, that's what I yeah. would kind of. 
And just that question, is there any parking changes or anything that could help open, you know, help well, the traffic they, flow? By the way, I'm seeing if I pulled it up right, 9-3 is the first day of school. Ah, Tuesday, 9-3. Okay. So and and, and, oh, and quite, be, quite honestly, too, it's incumbent on this group here to give me that information with Alex, right? So let's get me that information so yeah. I have it. You know, the info I'm not, about... What? The, no, I'm just trying to clarify. Give to give me the information fire. from fire, police, the volunteers. Okay. Sure, we can so, Steve, you'll help coordinate that with Alex? So, please okay. give me that information. Yeah, you're, yeah. Showing, so just you're showing that the first day of school is the third? If I pulled up yes. the right calendar. Yeah. yeah, so that's so the Steve third. Is okay, so forward. that's then, then, then let's correct it to we're the second. To, okay. So, we're just confirming Steve's going to coordinate with Alex on the fire, police. And, I, and I'm going to give two options to make Alex aware, and then obviously it'll come back to Ben, but option one would be closing it. So the option one would be a full closure from July 3rd. And, and also too, there's there's another option, which is no closure whatsoever. If I can't, if I can't get the TC on board, you know, that if I can't get the votes, I can't get consensus, there's gonna be no closure. Also so, true. I don't think we're going to bring that up as an option tonight. <laughs> or not, but I mean, I want to be realistic. Yeah. It, when when there was a fisticuffs in here, I could see no closure whatsoever. I know, but that is just a few people, unfortunately, calling the shots for the I, whole I time. promise you this. If the, if the police department, fire department, the, the, That's the guys come back and say it's a problem. Well, that's a showstopper. No, that's, that's a certainly a show. Yeah, we don't right. want. But we don't want to. We don't yeah, have that official feedback. Sure. We don't have that feedback. Yet. Sure. Right. 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 So I just want to make sure. It's so it's Steve. I, I I was must have been looking at something else. It's it would have to be on Labor Day, September second. Yep, okay. I'm marking down all these dates. Um, and I'll I'll give them to Alex. I mean, double check. It's just what I pulled up quickly on my phone. So also mm -hmm. making. You know, Make sure calendars haven't changed since the version I Googled. Well, and, and just keep in mind that um, because the business administrator has the authority to change the dates, if there were an error or something or something did change um, on a school calendar, we can we can override the dates in the ordinance, and that's at Alex's discretion. So there's a, that's a nice safety valve. Okay, I um I have what I need. To, uh, to report back, so I'll just read it to you guys. And I actually have one other question too. Um, and I hate to ask this question, but I don't. The, the cost of a safety officer mm -hmm. on site, it's the, it's 24 seven, right? No. 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 When was the safety officer on site? So we Not have, a so a, a police officer uh, is on site usually Wednesday through Sunday. Um, and I want to say six to 10, something like that. And we did have an incident last year where a gentleman did pass away in the pedestrian mall. He was a member of the band and he had a heart attack while they were setting up. Uh, an officer did respond who had uh, an AED, you know, the, uh, the heart uh, defibrillator. Yeah. Um, he had it in his vehicle. He was able to do it on the spot. However, uh, the gentleman did not survive. So that is part of the package that the town has is there is an officer there Wednesday through Sunday. Don't quote me a thousand percent, but I think that's pretty close. Um, six to 10 usually, and they have an AED with them. And we've never had an incident of any type of, uh, you know, altercations, or you've probably had more fights in this council chamber than at the pedestrian mall. Um, but the, uh, it's always been, you know, the police have done a good job in controlling the crowds because the crowds well, can well, get pretty well, large. Listen, we're living in precarious times. So, yeah. you know, we, we have to be prepared for anything and everything. And we haven't had any, uh, as far as I know, haven't had any pedestrian vehicle conflicts. Um, you know, we set up the barriers in a way that, you know, there's high visibility, good signage. Um, we have had, for special events, we've had a crossing guard um, as well over there. So I think from a law enforcement safety component, obviously separate to the hospital issue, um, it's been managed quite well. The police and, and um, have, have taken care of it. So. 
Okay, so you're you're going to proceed with the dates you want to. So yeah, so my my first option that I'm going to present to Alex is a full closure from July 3rd to September 2nd, and then the second would be a hybrid of July 3rd to 7th, July 11th to 14th, July 18th to 21st, and then um, although maybe that double check me 18th yeah that July 18th to 21st, and then the full closure would proceed July 25th to September 2nd. And that would all be contingent upon uh, Ben's request of EMS, fire, police, and the hospital having communications with the town. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have anything they want to add? And then we'll move on to the agenda. Okay. Right. Property maintenance standards discussion, attachment six. Mr. Yeah, I'll, I'll be pretty quick about this. You have it um, in oh, your oh, packets. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Were there any uh, fairs during the summer as well where the Melbourne Avenue's closed? No. Um, so the ta so that was those were hosted by the Chamber of Commerce through a third party vendor that organizes the fairs. They were right. typically in, let's say, April and September. Um, the township had decided that that was not necessarily. Um, something we wanted to pursue anymore. So last year, I believe there was a spring event. The fall was canceled and they've been canceled uh, now in perpetuity. So there are no uh, street, street fairs, fairs on Milburn Avenue. Oh, okay. That's it. Lunar, Lunar New, Year. New Year event. Yeah, Lunar New Year was in March. Right, so that's not a conflict with the Main Street closure. Right, but that closed. Uh, no, this, this past year it was at the high school. It there's, was not on the street. Oh, year. okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. they they have a they have some conflicts with their AV. Um, they do a really really nice show. Well, Ben and I I was sitting behind Ben the whole time. You didn't know it, but I was staring at the back of your head for two hours. Um, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, the the the, the uh, Lunar New Year folks um, they have they have a great show, and doing it outside doesn't really uh, showcase it as well as they can. I mean, that's what I was gonna. Sorry, going back to the closure that is an opportunity to bring in, like we have said, the reach out to the other communities in town, right? To have music or yeah. dance or other things that are culturally, mm -hmm. like, yeah, I, exactly I think that's what a great opportunity. The Open Streets program plays a really nice role in that because, I mean, we can, it's limitless what we do with the nonprofits yeah. or community groups. Yeah. Um, so just briefly on attachment six, uh, I think this is more for kind of starting a conversation as to where the explorer may want to go on this. Um, Jackie asked me to prepare this one page abstract of a potential ordinance that could be supported by Explore, at least discussed by Explore in advance to the Township Committee. Um, it's, it's really just a working document. So uh, nothing here is official. This is really just for discussion. Um, the idea came from conversations I've had with virtually all of you about um, how some of the vacant properties in the town look, especially uh, in the SID. Um, and Ryan can speak to this you know, better than anybody probably, but vacant and abandoned property law in New Jersey is is pretty strict. Uh, it's, it's hard to enforce um, uh, some of the, the property maintenance issues um, that, that come with some of these, these vacant properties. And so uh, what we discussed was the ability to create a special ordinance for properties within the SID boundaries um, that would consolidate the requirements from the municipal code. Right? So the municipal code is pretty voluminous. Um, this would consolidate them, make them easy for people to digest. Um, will allow the SID to play a greater role in the process of reporting deficient properties and, and trying to address them, um, providing immediate remedy, requiring a higher and broader standard of appearance than what's stated in Section 10-4 of the Municipal Code. So think of this, this is a special improvement district, and we want a special level of appearance. Um, and that is allowable under Section 10-4.3, if I recall. Um, would allow the, the, the SID to impose fines on deficient properties, and then that money could be used to remedy those properties. Um, and then it would only be assessed on uh, assessed properties within the district. So uh, residential properties or nonprofit or government properties would not be subject to the same standard um, that, uh, that the properties are. So um, really that's, that's the discussion um, that we'd like to have. And um, you know, maybe for tonight or to at least to start the discussion, but um, I think there's certainly areas of the, of the SID where we could see an improvement in the way that the buildings look, the sidewalks look. Um, so do, do you know if other towns in the area actually kind of have this with SIDs to summit or? I, I don't know if they have necessarily standalone ordinances. Um, a lot of them will focus manpower on addressing some of the, the dirty sidewalks and things. 
The challenge really is if you have a, a, a vacant property, right, within the SID district, there's really very limited enforcement that you could have. Um, so that I think is, is the primary challenge in the town. So you have an abandoned properties list, but in terms of appearance, there's only so much that you could do to try to make them make that property look better. And this would be an opportunity potentially to, to have a higher standard and try to enforce those standards. Can I say one thing and ask Please. a question? Yeah, I mean, for I really like the idea of an effort that that would enable some of the longer standing vacant properties to be enhanced because we've had so much success and the great reduction in the vacancy rate, but there's a couple of very key buildings and locations that, you know, even if they're vacant could look a lot better. I guess I have a broader question, which is, does this have to be limited to the sin? I mean, a whole separate concern I have in my, is, you know, two blocks from where I live and at the gateway to our town at Fox Hall and Milburn Avenue, the gas station is just yeah. the biggest eyesore. So, and you live in Wyoming as well, right? So, and I say it's the gateway to our town from the east of the eastern part of New Jersey. Is there a way that we could have a broader, have this on a broader basis and for those properties that are within the SID, could the township, like could the township do something broader? And then for the properties in the SID, the SID could be the same way we're like delivering on the grant you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier in the SID area. Could the SID cover the SID area, but could the town have these higher standards overall? Well, you know, I'm not just I'm not sure about over overarching standards, but even that area, you know, we're looking at doing something with that area as well. Because now we're gonna introduce an open open space tax, which for those monies give us substantial more flexibility make that a beautiful park with the welcome to Milburn kind of work, you know, the, the you know, the um, origin of Milburn, next plaque, some park benches, some green grass for, God forbid, some green grass um, and such. Um, but, you know, in terms of, I don't want to say forcing, but forcing a landowner who's bought property to, 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 uh, to, I'm not sure there's, we don't have any laws on the books right now that actually, to actually uh, manage that. It sounds like we do, well, we, you're we saying do. they're not that strong. Right. Yeah. They're so not that strong. That's what you would tell There's, there's a difference, right, between an occupied property that just isn't all that attractive, right, versus a vacant property where you have an absentee landlord who doesn't clean it, right, it's just going to sit there, right? No one's going to come clean it because we don't have a mechanism right. to do that. Right. And I don't think it's the responsibility of the improvement district to pay for the maintenance of one particular property or another, right? We maintain the general area with flowers and street cleaning, but what we've kind of distilled this down to, right, is that there are a handful of properties which are, and I don't want to, they are a blight on the town. However, they're not a legal blight as far as New Jersey vacant properties are concerned. That's part of the problem. They are a blight and we don't have a mechanism to say, this property looks terrible, we're gonna hire a cleaning crew to come in and clean it up because the, the owner won't. If there was some standard where the SID could assess that property owner a, a violation, and then we could use that money to clean that space because they won't, that is probably the cleanest, most efficient way of attacking some of these derelict properties. So I think that's, that's the real goal here. Because I can't use public money that I take from a tax assessment to go clean, you know, some guy's property because I don't like how it looks, right? That's not equitable. But if that person were fined and the SID had the ability to then take that money and remedy the situation, it's a much cleaner way of approaching. So that would have to go through, uh, through an ordinance right. to, to the township council, which the governing body would have to That's opine right. on. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, you know, you know, stepping on a property owner's rights, uh, to me, you know, to me as a, as a, as a business person and uh, is, is always a very, very difficult thing as a resident or a taxpayer's rights to, to do. So I think, you know, I, I just want, is there a better way to go about it? This is kind of the question. Uh, 
uh, than, than the Sid becoming the arbiter of what's a blight and what's not. I mean, Pass, Ryan. I mean, in your experience, what what are your have you seen this before in your practice? Sure. Let me ask a couple of questions before uh, I can answer that. So, uh, Steve, if you could explain to me, because I'm a little so there is a property maintenance code in Melbourne's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just, and you attach so, it. It's this entire and that is what this ten yes. point. Yes. Call ten point four. And, and I, I'm, I'm unclear. So, what is the ask of the SID? Is sure. it to is it to request the B? Well, I think if we were to say the simplest goal, let's not say an ask, but a goal would be to create a mechanism where the SID could take a penalty, a monetary fine, and then use that monetary fine to clean the space that is not being attended to. So, so what typically happens now, so there's, there's two, putting aside a heightened standard for SIDs. Um, and, and again, with the caveat, I haven't reviewed Milburn's municipal code, so I'm going to speak about in general and it, it probably is consistent, but it may differ. Um, you, you have property maintenance codes, and if a, a property, regardless of its commercial or residential character, violates that, uh, then the summons is issued. Um, it's a municipal court summons. And um, you know, typically there's a warning first. Uh, if it's not compliance, then you have a summons, you have to come to court. Uh, there's penalties, fines, et cetera. Um, beyond that, in some other circumstances, in addition to that, um, a municipality itself can undertake certain maintenance, and then the cost of that maintenance becomes a lien on the real estate. Right. Um, now, uh, again, there are, you have to have an ordinance in place to do that, et cetera. So that is the current, that is the common status quo in most municipalities in the state of New Jersey right now. And I guess if, if I understand the executive director correctly, you're suggesting that the standard property maintenance requirements typically address broken windows, overgrown weeds, et cetera. And I think you're talking about properties in the SID that um, uh, need beautification beyond just the bare minimum. Uh, so you're not just talking about overgrown weeds, but perhaps fresh coats of paint um, and things of that nature. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good way to say it. it it's, it's at the, it is the overgrown weed problem, right? But it's also to, to elevate to the things that you explained because derelict properties bring down the commercial value of the entire district. They make the pedestrian experience that we strive so hard to achieve negative. And so we don't have in place an immediate remedy. As you, as you just explained, there is a legal process. That legal process could take an enormous amount of time. Perhaps the, the levying of, of, the, uh, of the lien is an approach. I think that might be perhaps more aggressive than the town wants to be. Um, I, I, and again, this is why we don't have to walk away tonight with a conclusion, but I think this is a critical issue, especially in a town that has fairly aging infrastructure and buildings. Um, this is not a new construction town. Most of the buildings in this town go back to the 1930s, 1950s, 1960s. They are, believe it or not, 1950 was 70, 40 or two. Um, so we have some real challenges in terms of maintenance that are only going to get worse unless the town steps up and decides to do something. I don't know what that do something is right now, but I think it's incumbent upon this SID board to have a functional discussion about it and say we have to get in front of this because it's only going to get worse. Is this on the code enforcement officer of the town? I'm just reading yeah. the... So the code enforcement officer is literally one person who's responsible for every single property in the town, right. including residential. But, but, but even reading this, I mean, honestly, reading this, I, I would call my, on my neighbor. If any of this happened to my neighbor, I'm calling you know, code enforcement. They're going to come and take care of it. I'm just not sure why you wouldn't do the same with, with the business versus having... You know uh, the Sid, the Sid walking around with a badge and, and enforcing code. Uh, you know, personally, I would say it would probably be an overreach. Just in in my, in my first blush here, as I'm looking at it, um, I would just have to understand more. If this is a set of nine, ten bullets right here of what it is, that has nothing to do with 
bad paint or broken windows or, or, or such, it's talking about overgrown. I mean, literally, if, if, if there's a lot, or there's a lot across the street, if there's any of this going on, you call the code enforcement, he comes out, makes them get the leaves swept up and such, and you move on, or issues a summons. So I'm just trying to understand where what you just talked about comes into play uh, on this, because it's not listed in here. But I think it's an economy of scale, right? It's, if we have to handle this from the code enforcement perspective, but we have one individual, Right, who's responsible not only for commercial spaces but all residential. Um, I think the response time is probably too low. Uh, but and let's let's be very very frank about some of the properties in downtown, most especially. There are others on Upper Milburn. Um, they're not to the extent of Short Hills, but certainly Upper Milburn and downtown. There are properties that are absolutely filthy, and the town has not gone out and enforced. The rules because having a dirty storefront is not necessarily the violation, but it is an eyesore. And so I think maybe there's something in between. And, and you know what? Maybe the town wants to say, you know what, this is an issue for us. And we want to set aside just like we did $20,000 from clean communities. Let's match that with municipal funds that will allow the SID to hire a power washing crew and a sweeping crew right. on an on, an, on on call basis. Right. A lot of bids do that. Right. And yeah. so that's something to think about that is not necessarily government overreach. Um, but I think what it does is it gets us to the point of there are deficient derelict properties. The owners will not maintain them. So either we allow that or we confront it. Yeah. And I, I think confronting it through potentially putting a fund together that allows the SID to go out and hire private vendors is something that is done across New Jersey through SIDS. It's just that we have a fairly small budget. Um, so that's that's probably the issue. But I think I think you and I are somewhat on the same train here of let's remedy this, but let's do it in a way that's not an overreach to property owners. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. There's two ways of remedy it. One is you make the businesses so successful that they're able to sell the buildings or make them not vacant or, or whatnot. Uh, and they have so many customers coming in and complaining about the, uh, the dereliction of, of the sidewalks and, and, and such, or, or they are able to rent it, uh, or two is, you know, somewhat of a, what I would believe is an overreach. Uh, but I've never met a person in Milburn Short Hills who's, who's not shy to call a, call the, um, call the, uh, that, the that's local, a rest, the, the but that's a but that's a res for the most part for residential. The the township is not adequately addressing, from what I've observed over the course of this, uh, my tenure, that not adequately addressing certain as the you know derelict properties or or properties that are unkempt, their windows, their doors, the dirt in the in the hallway in the in the oh, entries. I and, and this mechanism would allow, um, would allow the, the SID to just, to, to, be, a, to be a conduit for, um, for improving those. Uh, we're, it, there's no reason to me why Melbourne Avenue shouldn't be glistening. It's, 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 it's the major thoroughfare of our downtown. There's, there's, a, there's several properties that are just that shouldn't be. Um, and, and, and I may not, I, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with you. I'm not sure if the SID's the right place to do it. Yeah. I mean, do we need to hire another code enforcement person, another two or three? Well, this, or would, this would be certainly. That's kind of the, the, the question I'm asking is are we empowering the SID to, to go out and patrol Milburn mm -hmm. Avenue and, and, and are we? deputizing the SID to go around and write out summons and, and uh, Steve, what do you think? Yeah, You're no, yeah, no. Um, I don't want to be deputized to, to do that. <laughs> and that, that's, uh, not, that's not the intent. No, no. I, 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 think, I think it's like, it comes down to the flow of money, right? So we all agree there's this derelict, very dirty entrance way on Melbourne Nap, whatever it is. How do we take care of that? Because I agree, it should be a glistening. That's our, this, this is our town, right? So 
so far the mechanism hasn't been working, right? So for whatever reason, bureaucracy, lack of resources, these are still sitting there very dirty. And we're going to be bringing in thousands of people from our neighboring towns for this music, for whatever, right? So what's the best mechanism? It seems to me like you can go back through and make sure that the town is actually enforcing this code as it exists, right? It, it seems to me like, or maybe, like you said, allocate money to sit. We'll hire somebody to go power wash and kind of take care of it, right? So if the town doesn't, we have two mechanisms, the existing enforcement capabilities of the, of the town, which have, for whatever reason, not been 100% effective, or I guess we're, we'll do it as an organization if we get the funds. And we're not trying to be the cops, but I think it's pretty obvious which locations are like, or this isn't going to be like, we're right, cracking the fact, We are asking to be the cops. This, this is, goes beyond, yeah, I don't want to be the cops, but... <laughs> Um, I think I think it's a reasonable like you can point to it. And nobody would disagree. Like this hasn't been washed right. in ten years, and what's going on? You know, those are my thoughts. We can we can ruminate on it and come back and talk yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, Tracy, uh, do you have any thoughts, Alexa? I mean, my thoughts are just that. Again, over these last few years, we've seen set all these new businesses and so much vibrancy, and there are a couple of locations that they're just holding us back to what we can achieve as a town. And so, um, yeah, I think it's more about what our objectives are and what are the right ways to get there. So I think it's good that we're talking about it in this way. And are there other ways to get there? Um, yeah, Alexa. Yeah, I, yeah, thoughts. I, I, no, no, I know. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I know I know how much work goes into just keeping the storefront clean. And I understand that throughout the years, things can fall through the cracks. But I think um, a couple businesses can bring down the whole block. So maybe, you know, just something needs to get done. Yeah, and listen, by no means am I saying that doesn't need there doesn't need to be some beautification in Milburn or Milburn Avenue. I'm saying the way that it needs to be done needs to be it needs to be done correctly and through the right channels. And uh, and you know, deputizing the CID. I, I don't want a badge. Do <laughs> I don't want a badge. Well, I, but the badge. Code, <laughs> I know that was <laughs> But the code enforcement officer, if I'm reading this correctly. Right, but maybe it's a discussion for Alex and a discussion yeah. for the code enforcement officer and, and with, with with the SID and say, hey, listen, there's an issue. How do we how do we solve it with the with the issue with the regulations we have in place? You know, what would be your you know, they deal with it every day. What is your best uh path to success? And let them opine on it. Instead of us sitting here in um in, the, in this room, you know, figure out, you know, the best way forward. It takes, you know, everyone's input. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll continue the discussion. Well, can we uh, task you with maybe having a side conversation with Alex and perhaps code enforcement? Well, I'll speak to Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, I, and I'd be happy to, to have that discussion and call in Alex and the code enforcement have that discussion. And, uh, a rising tide lifts all ships. Listening tide. Listening tide. Yes. Okay. We're at the uh, we're at the the public comments. The public comments. Public comments. Public comments. Is it open when, public meeting, Mr. Stoller? When invited to speak, please come to the lectern, state your name, and speak into the microphone so that your pro your comments can be properly recorded. When reading a prepared statement, please send a copy to Tracy at exploremilburnshorthills.org. Speakers will limit their comments to three minutes. If you're utilizing Zoom, please, you will have the opportunity to speak. You must have your camera turned on. This is a business meeting and professional decorum must be maintained. If a speaker engages in disorderly conduct or other acts of disruption, they will be asked to cease their public comment or asked to leave the meeting. Um, what we also intend to do is after the public comment period, if, if any of the board members or Ryan or Mr. Grillo would like to respond to a public comment, 
they'll have that opportunity to do so. Mr. Feld. Try to be very brief. Um, Jeffrey Feld, I'm a Milburn resident. Um, just to bring you an update uh, as to the mediation, since no judge has ever designated a mediator, today I wrote a letter to the court because we have a new judge and we now have our fourth judge to get a date for, uh, or for her appoint a mediator to actually handle it. I look forward to speak, listening to Mr. Bueller because I have a relationship with him where he, I, he did not allow a Main Street, he denied Main Street application in Orange. I look forward to meeting the Brossy Paints. Are they changing their name or are they going to be using a Suburban? Because I, have a, it'll be wrong. because I have a long time relationship with Orange. As to, I guess, the power washing, you're giving a grant. The question is, do you are you subject to make sure that the contractor provides prevailing wage. I just throw that out because that's become a large issue of uh, government contracts and you're getting grant money. So I don't know that. I don't know if you, you, you wrote that in your or like your request, whether what the, the wages that they're paying them are prevailing wages. I just want to go back to the Main Street closure. And a lot of this is history. 220 in 2020, the Main Street closure occurred prior to the creation of the SID and it was done by resolution around in May. In 2021, the Main Street closure was done by resolution. And, and in 2020, I think Marla was in charge of getting entertainment and she didn't have the contract. That's another issue of the audit. In 2022, the state came back and said we had to do by ordinance. And then when we started reading the statute, we said, where was the traffic study? And Mr. Wasserman just brought like a one page report by the police chief. Last year you did by ordinance, but the traffic study was done by the engineer and you and when you went to the statute, it wasn't done under the pedestrian mall statute, it was done under a different statute. I just throw that out as we have the history historical record. And the historical record is yes, it has to be done by ordinance, but it was the need of the traffic studies and how more expansive they had to be because we do not want to have a situation like we did have at the township committee. Um, as to some of the other ideas that were going on, just floating at the end, be very careful about what your powers are that you do not have want to be the deputized to be the policeman. Because the original ordinance, SID ordinance, the one that got, got revoked originally, they gave you condemnation powers. And I don't even know how a SID ever got condemnation powers. I mean, there are limited police power powers you have, some of them aren't police powers, and you have to be very careful because there is concern by a lot of business owners and property owners of creeping socialism. Socialism. Thank you. I'm going to be quick. Richard Seibert, resident. First, Vinny's Oven Pizza. You have it as Vinny's Over Pizza. So there's a typo on your page. Um, second, $60 a year for unlimited parking. It's from a year the day you from the day you pay or from a year from January 1st. Is there a sticker that goes in your car? Because I've heard some people that had the 60 minute, $60, but they still got a ticket from the ticket guy without checking that they had the sticker. But anyway, and third, you were talking about being the enforcer. Property owners have their own objective with their property. And sometimes um, it doesn't look so beautiful, but their, their plan isn't to make it beautiful now but to make it beautiful later after they get all their approvals that they're waiting for. So I just have to say that. Thank you. Hi, Vicki Powell, a uh, business owner. A uh, uh, couple things. The pay station, the film is coming off on one of the pay stations. Oh, okay, you know that. There's a chip in the mural. <laughs> uh, I know you have a guy that's supposed to do it a couple times a year. I just wanted to let you know. Um, 
in regards to the shopper permit, I don't know if the town sends stuff out. I don't know, like with the sewer bills or whatever they do, maybe stick a little sheet of paper in there and say, hey, residents, we have a shopper permit park because people don't know that. That might be a good way to do that. Um, uh, in regards to um, in, uh, the restaurant week, are we going to have the flashing thing down there, say support restaurant week? Are we going to have that do that? Yes. Yeah. And also... Um, the flashing thing. Oh, and another post maybe on the township's social media page because the last one they did was in February. Um, and also um, the outdoor dining when uh, when you mentioned that. So they're not allowed to have tables out right now unless they unless the ordinance is passed. But there's some restaurants that have tables outside. I'll answer that. Right yeah. Now. Okay. So I'm a little confused about that. And I have to say the social media is kicking it is so good they're doing great i only hope that for girls night out we have the same kind of um influencers because these guys are doing a fabulous job mm -hmm. if you have not seen the socials they're all over the place they are just wonderful and you guys so you guys are doing a great job on that uh, i think that's it goodbye <laughs> do, um, steve do you want to answer vicky's oh yeah. sorry yeah, we have one oh sorry Good evening, Mrs. Urso. Good evening, Harry Urso. Um, just a couple questions. Um, Amanda had mentioned that they had someone going around for restaurant week. Um, that individual, I just, I wasn't clear, it wasn't clear, was this individual that was going around assisting, was she a volunteer or was she a paid professional? Uh, secondly, on their monthly bill list it's attached to your uh, agenda packet there's things that are listed as general uh, operating expenses and can if those can be clarified i mean are this like uh general operating expenses things that are being is there an expense account for our professionals uh within the administration part not sure if they have salaries plus they get um allowances that they could expend um also i have um wanted to mention back in uh when mr uh, you guys were talking i'm sorry about the main street closure i just wanted to mention you talked about plan a plan b i know the executive director didn't really want to bring up um plan c i understand and i appreciate mr stoller's um mentioning that we should have all of these reports which i think is pertinent. However, Plan C, in the event that it was not to um, to be passed by the TC, that's totally up to them and under their discretion, is there something, is there, is there a Plan C? And is there something that is um, they're working on the event that that closure does not come to fruition, considering that you have five districts and what you what your thoughts are as far as uh, in the event that that should happen, not to say it's going to. And then lastly, um, I'm sure the chair at the time in 2020 was actually the sitting mayor when the SID was actually in for adoption. Um, she may remember or recall that my husband did mention and it's unfortunate that then no one was willing to talk to us. And it's nice to see that TC members now today are actually willing to go out to property owners and residents and actually talk to them. And uh, we were not privy to that type of um, engagement. But my husband did mention that the SID would have tentacles. And here we are today that certain things have added on uh, to the SID um, ordinance. So I'd like to tell and mention that we purchased our property without an HOA and there is not an HOA attached to my deed. Thank you so much and have a nice evening. Is there anybody else on, uh, on Zoom? No other hands raised. Okay. Uh, Mr. Grillo, would you like to respond to? Or, and then if anybody has any questions in case I missed something, let me know. Um, just starting in order. Uh, Mr. Feld asked a question about prevailing wage. I will double check um, the clean communities requirements because that is where the money is coming from. Um, I don't believe there's a prevailing wage in that, but I will absolutely check. 
Um, Mr. Seibert, um, I, so the 60 day or the, the $60 uh, resident shopper parking, um, I believe starts in the calendar year. So January one, um, the ticket potentially could have been issued for a, a time overage um, because time limits do apply. So that is the possibility um, as to why that ticket, obviously I don't know what the ticket was, but that is, um, you do have to abide by time limits uh, with that program. Um, Ms. Powell, um, the mural and uh, that will get repaired probably in May. We're waiting for winter um, winter season to end and then we'll do a, a full seasonal repainting. Um, the same with appealing parking stations. Um, the winter beat them up a little bit, but we will order that. Um, the, I will ask Alex and the police department if we can get a, a variable message sign about restaurant week. That'd be terrific, um, as well as the town social post. Um, the idea about the shopper permit, the sewer bills is, is terrific. I will talk to the, the tax collector on that. Um, the question on the outdoor tables, you may, there are some people who've already submitted their applications and been approved. Um, so they were pretty quick about it. So Goldberg's, for instance, already submitted theirs the day of. Um, but if there's other people, they may have them out and have not actually gotten the, uh, the approval. But then again, as I said, there's only one code enforcement officer for the whole town. Um, so part of the problem, you want to enforce the rules, you have the manpower to do it. Um, Ms. Urso, um, she asked, uh, so, so Corinne Mahoney, um, she is a, a paid temporary employee. Um, she has a contract with us um, and uh, that's paid out of our event line, just like any other vendor would be. Um, and then if the closure doesn't happen, we would simply uh, reallocate the funds in that event line to something else. So whether that's, uh, you know, that, that, that money just goes from one line to another. And that's it. Is there anybody else that has another question? We reply. To yes. Okay. Go ahead. Go by, by all means. Okay. Um, so to to Miss Vicky's uh, point, uh, can you put a um, request into Alex for the TC committee message this week to mention shop local and restaurant week is coming up to make sure they absolutely amplify that message. I would also encourage them to put it on the electronic sign board right outside town hall. Sure. Uh, and then uh, um, the sewer bill, I think that's going to be problematic just because it's a, uh, uh, I don't think they can stuff those. Anybody. Anybody. No, I, we understand, I understand it. Just, I understand what you said. Yeah, the sewer bill, I think. Yeah, I think it's the card. The sewer yeah. bill's a card. And then um, uh, to, to Jeff Feld's comment on creeping socialism. Obviously, we understand your point. Uh, and then, uh, and I think that goes to Perry Erso's point on HOA when they bought their property. It wasn't an HOA. I know it's a legal issue, and uh, I'll defer to everybody else on that. Thank you. Is there any other uh, board member that would like to add? Um, I think I would just say. It, you know, we'll be awaiting the feedback on the closure regarding the first responders and all of that. Hopefully it's deemed that things are safe and we can all work together. If there were to somehow that wasn't, that there wasn't going to be a closure. Again, I hope it's not the scenario, but if we did need to do a plan C, I think I would just ask that we as a group would brainstorm together other ways that we could, bring excitement to, you know, during the warm weather to all of, to town and to all of our districts. So that that's something we would want to work on together. Anybody else have anything else they'd like to add? No, I was going to back to Yeah, okay. <laughs> I just want to mention that our, uh, our next meeting will be Thursday, April 18th at 6.30 and that will include a, the state of the SIG report and review of KPIs and, su and success tracker, tracker for Q1. May I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. This meeting is adjourned. All in favor? Oh, no.